What up, everybody? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Auto Tempest. You know how Auto Tempest works. It makes your life easier by handling your double work for you. Why search all of the car sites on the internet yourself when there's a site that does that job for you? Autotempest.com looks at all the major car sites, a bunch of the minor car sites, and you only have to type in your information for what you're searching for. One time. And pretty soon it's going to be even better because they're integrating a new function that I can't say yet, but it's a new uh, marketplace of vehicles. And that's going to be coming to Auto Tempest Search very soon. They have been um, great to us over the years. So when you're looking for a car, do us a favor by going to Auto Tempest and doing yourself a favor by going to Auto Tempest because you are saving yourself time and time, people, is money. Autotempest.com. We love of them. Next up, look into your hood. Maybe your check engine light comes on. What are you going to do? What do you do? Step one, get yourself a Blue Driver Pro Scan Tool. Blue Driver can read all the computer systems in your vehicle, tell you what the problem is, and suggest solutions from a database of millions of ASE verified fixes. Then fix the problem yourself or head to the garage armed with knowledge. Either way, you're in control. Plus, Blue Driver can do so much more than just read codes. View live data from your vehicle, read freeze frame and mode 6, do a smog check, stay up to date on recalls and service bulletins, and much more. That's why Blue Driver is the best-selling scan tool on Amazon. Don't take our word for it. Check out the thousands of positive reviews on Amazon, reviews written by real people who saved a ton of time and money with Blue Driver. For a limited time, take advantage of the special smoking tire offer. Visit bluedriver.com slash TST. That's bluedriver.com slash TST to get 10% off the Blue Driver Pro Scan Tool. Don't let your car troubles be a mystery Again, get Blue Driver today at bluedriver.com slash TST. And how about that Brio Beardscape, folks? I broke it out last night. I was getting awful scruffy. You're going to see in my uh, BMW M5 review how scruffy I got. And the Beardscape is so money. It's like... Everybody hates working on your car with cheap, crappy tools, right? You want to you want to use good quality tools. You know they're going to last. You know they're going to help your life, not make it more annoying. Same thing with the buzzer. Stop using that cheap trimmer and upgrade to a smooth, quiet, precision trimming device. The Beardscape is the jam. I've been using it for like two years. I buzz my face, then I shave with the razor, and then I look good. I also use it in other places that you probably don't want to think about. But it be what it be, man. That's what happens when you have a 98% male listening ratio. You get to talk about your ball hair. (laughs) The Beardscape has a ceramic blade four times harder than stainless steel and stay sharp longer. The micro adjustments on the blade help you get that precision shave. Go to Brio for Life. That's Brio, the number four, life.com and use code SMOKING to get the best price online for the Beardscape. That's Brio for Life.com. Code SMOKING at checkout. Get the best price on the internet for that Brio Beardscape joint. All right, on this episode, we have, oh, I'm, ex- I'm excited for this one because we got Bozy Tatrovic in studio. Bozy is uh, one of my homies from back east. He is one of the best follows on Twitter. His Twitter is uh, Hoonable, and uh, he works on race cars. He's a, a race crew chief. He writes about stuff. He has imported vehicles. He has fixed, swapped engines. He's just like a, a A really interesting car person to know, and uh, I'm happy to have him in studio, Bozy Tatrovic on the Smoking Tire Podcast. And within a few hours. Ladies and gentlemen, Bozy Tatrovic. What's happening, brother? Oh, what's happening? Welcome to the West Side. Thank you, thank you. Cheers with this Lotus Whiskey. Thank you for the warm welcome. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for, you don't for make thank it, you for having me. Yeah. You don't make it to LA much. No, because most of my stuff's on the East Coast. I know. know, so it's the East Coast like it reminds me of how small the East Coast kind of is because you live in North Carolina and I go fly to all these different cities to do these races and you just you drive there from yeah. wherever. Yeah. I mean, you're a fucking mad road warrior. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I go I go to VIR. In the last last few months, I've been to VIR 
30 or 40 times because it's an hour from my house. Whoa. Yeah. I yeah. like that place. Yeah. VR, VR is great. Is cool, yeah. yeah. And like all the people there are awesome. And then like one of the teams I'm working with in World Challenge, they actually rented a garage there. So tech sport racing Sorry. that I work on the Subarus. So oh, like, yeah, they yeah. They moved uh, a lot of their operation from New York to Virginia. So just roll up there, go work on the car, adjust a little bit, go home. There you go. That's yeah, not bad. That's cool. Funny. They build Ariel Adams there too, I think. Yeah. There's like a yeah. shop there nearby. TMI oh. Tech. TMI, yeah. 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 What's that guy's name? He was such a nice guy, the TMI guy. Damn it. I don't know. They, they gave me an Ariel Nomad for a week. Yeah. That yeah. was very nice. Yeah, there's a, there's a little technology park there. So there's all kinds of random stuff. And then there's just like guys that just rent a garage to like work on their race cars. So like right beside where the team is, there's a guy that has a spec E46. Just a personal question. Uh, yeah. We were just talking about yeah. those in the last show. You yeah. ever drive spec E46? I have not driven one. Bro, no. yeah. we both got to have a go in one. Yeah. Yeah. It was the m so fun. Yeah. It was a beautiful yeah. little race car. Yeah, they seem really good. I mean, this guy has his like all perfect mil spec connectors and all this other stuff. I mean, that's like, you know, his baby, but. Does he race it or is he just fucking around with it? No, he races it oh, like yeah. uh, NASA. So I yeah. think uh, think they're gonna be racing their VR like mid October, so like couple weeks ago I was up up there and he was there and he showed me some of the stuff and he's got like three or four engines for it so depending on where he races it he'll put a different engine in ah, it, you know whatever lunatic. the class allows you know does he do it himself yeah boss yeah it's pretty cool and he builds builds BMW like suspension stuff for other mm. people like, I wonder if he knows fellow he sounds very fellow like do you remember <laughs> I love fellow yo fellow <laughs> do you know fellow ambivero you ever hear nah. that name this dude used to work for me when I was running the Gotham office back out here okay. And he was a drifter, and he was in Pro 2 for a while. He's in and out of Pro 2, yeah. the Formula Drift Pro 2. Fucking great driver, and a total lunatic. Exists pretty much only on Red Bull and Newport cigarettes yep. and McDonald's. <laughs> and I used to call him the E36 Whisperer. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Is that really his Twitter? Does he yeah. I can't imagine him tweeting, but his Instagram is fun. Yeah. And um, I call him the E36 Whisperer because he was like, he could like bear his writing was the worst writing like he couldn't spell for nothing <laughs> but he had he had 3 E36s and two drivetrains a turbo and an NA one uh, and he would he could swap an E36 drivetrain by himself in 12 hours he yeah. was like you yeah, he was yeah, basically that's, you that's cool. but like with more cigarettes <laughs> dude he just, was just crazy with, just with BMWs yeah yeah, yeah he like, was the BMWs like guy we, we, would, we would be we'd have a job where we have to haul like all the autocross stuff out to Arizona yeah. so we're like alright we'll see you in the morning and he's like yeah I'm gonna swap the drivetrain on this tonight <laughs> and he did it was, he stayed up and then wild. drove yeah, the truck the next day I, yeah. I can yeah I've follow met, him on Instagram pull what's his I want to get let's get fellow some followers he's gonna wake up tomorrow and be like where these followers come yeah, from yeah. F-E-L-L-O underscore racing yeah I'm definitely he's definitely, fucking yeah, hilarious definitely gonna have to follow that I like yeah. guys like that I work with a few I mean he's I'm, definitely your type yeah I'm, I'm like that sometimes but you know well, I watched you do two gear do a gearbox twice in yeah. one in one fucking race yeah, yeah. that's amazing but that's <laughs> yeah. the story of that race was such a bummer yeah. I felt so bad for you guys yeah it, it happens I mean that's just how racing goes sometimes Times. I mean, you know, no matter what level you are. And coincidentally, uh, John Shovel, who mm. was there with me, where basically me and Shovel were swapping the gearboxes. Yeah, shout out to John too, yeah, who's yeah, not here, but yeah. did this, uh, did the trans, yeah, the double yeah. transes. Yeah, yeah. so we're like <laughs> both of us under the car, but we actually compete against each other now. <laughs> So like I work. Who's in, he working with? Uh, EU Euro Parts Racing. So they oh, run the yeah. Audi TCR cars, which actually they're wrapping up their program now. Just you know, just money stuff with the company. But he's he's been working with them. I'm sure he'll be in IMSA too. But I work with LA Honda World on the Civic Type R TCR, and he works on the Audi TCR. Oh, so, so we funny. actually compete against each other. That's hilarious. Like, uh, yeah, there's. It go, seems go like back up. Yeah, right there's, there's John, John right, right there, there in the gray shirt. Yeah, yeah. he's so, a he's a beast. So this and is your a, brother, yep, uh, your Boyan, brother Boyan, yeah. who yeah. rules. Yeah, who at one point indirectly worked for my dad. Yeah, he worked at a Ralph Lauren like uh, distributor or something. He no, he worked for Ralph Lauren. Yeah. No, no, yeah, but, on the, but, on the, but uh, the e-commerce side. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not exactly sure, but he like all this clothes moving around. He did stuff with that. Yeah, it was like logistics yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's what I yeah, meant yeah, by distributor. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah, it was. But yeah, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, dude, that's like high school. All I had was like polo, just everything <laughs> polo because he got the hookup. So like they, you know, whenever you know they had employee sales, he yeah, just bring me out like a bunch of stuff, and Bro, that's all we, I ever wore. We raided the fucking blank tees and yeah, the fuck yeah. the little mini horse oh, tees. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had bunches and bunches. I went of those. big pony for a minute for a while too. I rocked the, that yeah. the 
That big pony thing yeah. was genius. Mm -hmm. You know why they did that? Mm. It was for the uh, for the because they sponsored the U.S. Open, the tennis thing. Ah, okay, it was okay. for the ball boys, so you could see the logo on TV. Oh, so they did it for the ball boy shirt, yeah. and Smart. then people were like, "Oh, what's that?" And yeah. then the, the horse got bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> until it was like, you know, Kanye yeah. had one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I, I had I had one of those shirts from a sale, like because they had like experimental clothes at some of these employee <laughs> sales. So I had one where it went on the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. yeah like there was a piece over here yeah. and it went down like halfway yeah. down the it shirt. It became like a caricature. Of yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, but, you know. yeah. Look, look, they got yeah. so big. It was the, the douchiest thing in Colorado. Yeah, got, I remember. There, look at the the bright blue one. Go up, up to the right that bright look how big yeah yeah see it started getting yeah. it started yeah. getting real wild yeah i had one of those the, the rugby style with yeah. the numbers on the on the, on the, on the Rug, arm the rugby was a thing for yeah, a minute yeah yeah, yeah i yeah. had a whole whole bunch of those but. that see, brand that rugby yeah. brand destroyed for about four years and then yeah. went right off of yeah mm. so well you know what i want to talk about because i want to there's a bunch of things yeah but like i would like you to Tell me, because t you've told me, but I want yeah. you to tell everybody else where you're from. Like, really, the the, the real, the full story. So. In, I, into the yeah. microphone. Oh, I know sorry. you've been on an airplane, but yeah. we, yeah. we do radio yeah, here. Yeah, of course. I'm, my apologies, <laughs> sir. I'm so sorry. Just, you know. Please raise your seat back, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yes. That's, do I, you know, I've, I've been, you know, you get yelled at on the plane. So, I was born in Bosnia in 1986. So, lived there, born in Sarajevo, so. Most people are they're familiar with it will know Syria was the capital city of Bosnia. So lived there until the early 90s, until about 91, 92, and then a civil war broke out. So that's the kind of Yugoslavia breaking up. So there was war in Croatia, war in Slovenia, war in Bosnia. And then after that, we kind of hid for a while where we could and then started bouncing around the country. And then we got out of the country and got to Montenegro, which is kind of the coastal area of Serbia. And then... While we were there, we got into a program with an organization called IOM, International Organization for Migration. So it's a refugee organization. Basically, if you're in danger, you can apply and then go through like usually anywhere from a few months to a few years to get approved. So uh, my parents went through the program and just a little over two years from when they started the program till we got approved and then and they like, had, what was the level of danger? Like, when they were like, describe the threat, yeah. what did you guys, what did you I mean, describe? You basically had to describe that, you know, like, you've lost your home, like, you know, the area where your home is, is taken by somebody that, you know, wants to do you harm. <laughs> yeah. And then, so, like, you have to... You like, have were to you guys literally ejected from your home? Or was oh. the building bombed, or like... No, I mean, it was, it was, so, there's a lot of stuff that happened, but basically, uh, there were, you know, like three main sides during the war and there was a side like Serb side, Croat side, Croat side and Bosniak side and each of the sides kind of pushed in an area. So wherever one side was strongest, it would push forward and try to take more land. It was just know. a power was it it was a power struggle almost. Yeah, yeah. So like I mean, you know, this like is a whole big complex topic, but the initial like I think we can solve yeah. this today, though. Yeah. We can oh, definitely yeah, figure yeah. it out. Well, that's can we the, get Kushner on the phone? He'll, yeah. he'll have insight on this. <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. But, like, the big Let's thing go was... Let's to the phone. That's it, that's it. The big thing was all these republics wanted independence, and then there were people in the republics that didn't want to be independent, people that didn't want to be independent, and then people that felt loyal to one side of the country people that felt loyal to the other side of the country so everybody fought for what their idea was and like in their little area yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, okay. and that was the thing is there was three groups and in certain parts of the countries two groups would be fighting against each other but in another part of the country they would be a lot aligned against the third group like yeah, it was like it made crazy. no sense like it's everybody just listening to propaganda from the politicians and just fighting for what they can and that's like the wild thing is you know where i am in north carolina we have all three of the ethnic groups that fought against each other in the war, and everybody hangs out, everybody's friends. That's like, crazy. After the war ended, even like, you know, we're like first generation immigrants, so most of us had exposure to it, but after end, they were like, you know, this doesn't make sense, like, you know. It doesn't apply over here. Yeah, like, like, yeah. like we, we speak the same language, you know, we, you know we, we look the same, we act the same, we eat the same type of food, like, why would we argue? That's like I hear you know, the same thing about Israelis and Palestinians on an individual I, I think, level. I think it's it's very similar. Yeah. Individual. That's level, what I was just thinking. But yeah. that's what's interesting yeah. is that even outside of that conflicted area, a lot of times they don't get along because there's so much politics yeah. behind yeah. it. Yeah. And I mean, there's some of that here too. And like our whole area is very very complex. So 
it, Yugoslavia used to be communist. So you have this generation of people that all they know is communism. So like even now, like all they think about is communism was good because all this bad shit happened yeah. after communism ended because everybody wanted their own republic, everybody wanted democracy. Mm -hmm. And then that's the thing too is like everything over there has been stable since like the early 2000s, but the economy is still kind of crappy because a lot of people still do business in the communist way where I want to open a business, so I'm going to go pay off this state official or go here, pay this guy off. And, yeah. and, you know, and then a lot of it's just you know, bad decisions and rebuilding after a war. Yeah. All well, right, so you get into this program, you come to America. When you were how old? Uh, I was, so I was eight, my brother was six, and my parents were like in their mid-30s. Okay. So basically we had, uh, we had to get sponsorship. So you don't just come to America. Like you'll get approved for the program and then the refugee organization has to look for somebody to give you a loan. So like you have to pay for your plane tickets and all this stuff, it's not just show up. So they found a church. Were your parents like decently well off over there or were they? Be before the war, yeah. So like they were an attorney and an accountant. So oh, I mean, yeah, they, okay. you know, so, yeah. you know that, you know, Fairly, fairly, fairly decent jobs, but once the war started, in fact, the least paid jobs in all of Bosnia, actually. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hot dog salesman, killing it. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, right there. But I mean, we, we were reasonably well off. They were building a new home when the war started, you know, mm. and it was, you know, we we lived pretty well before all that. But once the war started, the banks collapsed, and like anything you didn't have in your hands, you didn't. It was own. just fucking gone. Yeah, yeah. So like, basically, all oh. the all the cash that you had on you, which when we came to you know came to America was maybe three or four hundred dollars. Wow. That was it. That's why we came, you know. But basically, this church sponsored us. So, like, when they got to the end of the program, they found a few different nonprofit organizations, churches, and local, like, NGO type places that would offer money to give you a loan and help you get started. So, I think it was like a place in North Dakota, this church in North Carolina. Uh -huh. And, you know, they looked at us some, like, books and they're like, yeah, there's nobody in North Dakota. And like my dad had some family that had gone through the program that chose North Carolina too, so like we're gonna go there. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, how did all these like uh, these like refugees from that area you said even from all sides of the war ended up in North Carolina? Like how that happened? So, was that intentional? Well, part of it is the organization. So oh, like okay. if these nonprofit organizations that are giving out these loans, and sometimes they're giving out grants where they're paying for a portion of it, wherever they were, that's where the refugees are. Yeah. And then once the refugees get there, so like once we got here. You know, my parents worked like real crap jobs. So, like the first job they worked here was like building cabinet, kitchen cabinets, like building doors for like four seventy five an hour. You know, and, and like, they'd never done shit like that before. Well, I, I mean, you know, <laughs> like, not not really. Like my dad, you know, like he worked on cars and stuff because he liked cars for mm -hmm. fun, and he did like random jobs. Like when he was a teenager, you know, he did like construction. But not, yeah, okay, All but right. not since they had like finished college, you right. know. So basically, all these people kind of come here and. Once they're kind of stable, so my parents started with these like real crap jobs, and then once they started to learn English, worked their way up a little bit, and then got better jobs, so now they got $10 an hour jobs. Then a couple more years, they got $15 an hour jobs, and then they both decided to go back to college in their early 40s, because wow. they, you know, they- What's it like, if, if you can speak to this, like they are, when they're in there, when they're back in uh, Bosnia, they're highly educated people mm -hmm. with, you know, white collar job, whatever yeah. you want to call it, but they're yeah. educated people. Yeah. Then they have to come here and almost yeah. start over yeah. until they learn the language, yeah. save up money to go either get educated, but is, is the like whole time- begin getting educated yeah. Yeah. again. Right, are, are they, are the whole time they're like, God, this is annoying, you know, back home we yeah. were this and now we're this, no. or is it, yeah. this is amazing, keep your head up, like we're that's, very fortunate. That's that's the thing is, like, when we were kids, like, even though, like, like me and my brother, you know, have talked about this, like, recently, we just sat down and talked about it, like, you know, like, sometimes we spend on dinner what they made combined in a week when we first got to the country. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're just talking about trying to, like, just make sense of that, but, like, when, when we got here, like, you know, we thought that we were the richest kids in the world. Because, like, you know, my dad worked two or three jobs. My mom usually worked two, and then they kind of were able to get down to one job. So, like, they both worked multiple jobs, they rarely saw each other, but whenever wow. they were with us, they're like, everything is awesome. Yeah. We're not getting shot at. Like, you know, <laughs> this this is good. So like we had toys, we had, you know, candy, whatever. Like every other kid had. We had like, you know, basically like they most of the what they earned went to, you know, me and my brother. Yeah. So, you had a great uh Twitter thread like, I don't know, months ago. There yeah. was like a series of 
the kind of like crappy yet interesting yeah, cars yeah. that your parent yeah. went through. Yeah. yeah, like do the list. Like what car they could because this is uh, allegedly this is a car show. We're not. It's not, yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, like we, the. Uh, it's not the all refugee yeah, hour. Yeah, but I, yeah. but when you told me like the yeah, refugee story, I was yeah. like, oh my god, wait, Bozy's yeah. like not just the interesting most yeah, interesting person yeah. on Twitter. Like yeah. you're but, like the only yeah. refugee I know. So I mean, there's, that's good. Yeah, and your brothers. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Boyan. I know you're fucking out there. Yeah, I'm not trying to discount yeah, you, but yeah. you're not in that chair. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to bring next time. Oh yeah, dude. If he was coming to town fully, I love Boyan. He rules. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll be around. He's he's just kind of chilling right now doing a few few different gigs so he'll uh i'm sure he'll come through here at some point wait but so give us the list of your parents crappy cars <laughs> so when we got here the first car they had wasn't actually their car they it was like somebody like in the neighborhood just let him borrow a car and it was some like buick from the mid 80s like front wheel drive little econo box buick that it had like skylark right skylark yeah. that's it yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it and it had like seven or eight different like uh colors of panels because it was just like a salvage car that was put together and it was like for people in the neighborhood to use so this was like oh it was like the neighborhood share car yeah yeah like oh. somebody bought it but it was for everybody because like when we got here because of the jobs they worked we live in the projects so like you know that's you know just how stuff goes there you know yeah. like that and after that they saved up a little money and got a plymouth acclaim mm. yeah so that was it was it was uh those uh, are yeah, pr- yeah. they're really terrible yeah <laughs> it was a, it was a purple purple plymouth acclaim like a 91 or 92 oh yeah, yeah. with yeah. the flat the flat rear yeah, window correct. right yeah 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 so man whatever happened to that era of the yeah. f- totally I think, I think flat they just all crumpled like they're just <laughs> dust now you know which one i kind of dl liked was the cougar a yeah. bit cougar. Oh, with the flat, the yeah. flat rear. I mean, it wasn't one. bad. Like, I <laughs> yes, mean, it, it is. You're yeah. still it, wrong. It, it, about it's this. definitely You're bad. Wrong. But I mean, it had decent stuff underneath it. You know, like you, I always you know. thought, like a yeah. uh, uh, like an IMSA out cougar yeah. could be kind yeah. of cool. There's a Skylark. Yeah. There's an IMSA Skylark yeah. and an IMSA. I've seen the saw, one. Yeah, I was I was a, I was at Pebble and the Historics last month, yeah, and I saw both of them. Yeah, like they're awesome. Like those are like the GTO GTU cars. Like some of my favorite stuff. We literally talked about this on Twitter today. Is it? Something has like the right the right come of race parts. Yeah. It's suddenly good looking. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. like a flat yeah, I retweeted rear your tweet because it, it looked badass. I mean, like, look at it. Yeah, that's, that's a LeBaron. Like a, yeah, yeah. It's like, a LeBaron. It. Oh yeah, like, it's, it's a LeBaron. It. <laughs> Anything you put fenders on, exactly, or like yeah. arrow on, it's got to look awesome. In fairness, yeah, yeah. fat sidewall. That's, oh, it's good. What's great about the LeBaron in, in in a NASCAR is that you're allowed to make the pop up lights closed yeah, yeah. for the NASCAR. Yeah, yeah. So you have you have all the slipperiness. They just drew a couple of rectangles the only LeBaron thing works. here is the grill it uh, yeah it looks like a sticker oh, i dated a girl that drove a LeBaron in high school and what a hunk of shit i've heard i think i've only driven a LeBaron for like 10 feet once like, terrible I, that, that was it i've never like and that was the, that was enough the weirdest thing about a LeBaron is that the blinker is on the gauge binnacle not the steering column that's weird it's very doesn't very make any strange. sense at all I, I wonder why that is because they had to be uh, like yeah. fucking weird yeah the because they yeah. make it weird so, design okay, so or whatever so what was after the plymouth acclaim so plymouth acclaim that got sold and they got a dodge caravan so like we had a progression of, of vans so the first one no, actually, sorry. The first one was like a 1988 or 89 Plymouth Voyager. So, like, they started very basic. Like, yeah. you know, like, this one didn't have, like, the tinted rear glass. Like, this is, like, the very basic one because that's all they could afford at the time. Yeah. Right. This one didn't have doors, yeah. but it ran. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that, that, like that. So, they had that. And then that one got traded for, a, like, a 91 or 92 Dodge Caravan. So, the Dodge Caravan had the factory tint on the rear, had the captain's chair in the second row. Yeah. And I mean, this was still like a six or seven year old car with like 80 or 90,000 miles, but, but it was slightly chairs. better. But at the time, yeah. also, like, chairs are forever. Yeah, yeah. They invented the minivan, yeah. and it was so they yeah. were the best at yeah. right? Yeah. So, it like, really you know, it was a used car, but like, I remember that, like, those cars specifically, because this is like, we're like 11, 12. I'm, I'm 11, 12, and Boyan's like, eight or nine yeah and like we had that van so we went everywhere so yeah. like like this was like the now road trip now we get school, to go on road the, trips adventures yeah. and stuff so like 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 my parents they got like they got us a little mattress that would fit in the back so they took out the seats and like we went to canada like just chilling in the back <laughs> Like, you do. Yeah, I just had a mattress back there, had a bed, and like drove all the way up to like Ottawa because they had some <laughs> friends up there. So like trips like that, that was you know like really fun and really memorable. Where you know it was you know just a crappy old van, but it was a cool van because we did cool yeah, stuff yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. So 
Uh, after that, they got a Pontiac Bonneville. Oh. It was a 1989 Pontiac Bonneville. Uh, it was it was light blue in color. And Those were actually kind of cool. They were decent, yeah. Like, so they had they had the V three point eight liter V six, which is still one of my favorite engines to this day. Because like <laughs> can't kill it. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, other than some of them, they had the intake uh, intake manifold the gaskets that would leak, which is fairly easily fixable. Like it's not you know like the end all for the engine. Didn't They're Jack have a like a RX seven race car or something? Yeah, there? them guys yeah, had a, uh, Black Betty. Black Betty, yeah, Tin yeah. Man, yeah, the Tin Man owns that one. The the fabricator, and um, I'm blanking on his name right now, but yeah, Tin Man, he owns that Black Betty. So like Jack, uh, Mark, Sam, Mental, uh, Mental they Jordan. all raced it for a while. Yeah, yeah it's like a F. C I think so. It's like 88 with a 3, or 8800 in it. It's yeah. apparently very with fast. With 3800 in it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. got to be quick, right? Apparently it's got it's very fast. Fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, cuz I mean 3800 if you open it up a little bit, it'll make like 250 pounds feet of torque, which in an FC RX7 yeah. is very decent. Yeah, it like, is. I mean, you know, it what does. is what did they use it in the supercharged Pontiacs? Yes. They did, right? So that that 3.8 liter started as like a, a Buick engine in the 60s. So like in the mm -hmm. 60s they used it and then like it basically just built up on it over time. Mm -hmm. Then it got spread to you know Chevy and Pontiac and all these other ones. And they used it all the way up until like 2008 or 2009. So like the last of the Grand Prix oh, yeah, had yeah, like yeah, the yeah. generation four, I think it is, 3.8 to 3800 mm -hmm. supercharged. And I think they got them up to close to 300 horsepower by the end of its run. Yeah. But that engine was modified in various configurations. There was a, a cart version of it, like cart, like Indy for car. racing? Yeah, oh yeah. shit! Yeah. Really? So yeah. there's a yeah Buick 3800 racing version that was like 600 horsepower or something. <laughs> it was ridiculous. What what defines when a, a car or an engine has been used for that long that it's still being quote continued and not considered just a new engine that has the same displacement as the original? Like you know they say it has the same architecture. Yeah, sure. Like I'm block. wondering you know it's like it's like a house where if you rip it down but you keep the fireplace yeah, in one yeah, column yeah. it's like nope same house. Yeah no I, I get what you're saying. And a whole lot of it is just marketing. So a whole lot of it is what the manufacturer says. Like, you know, it's- When they say words like all new. Yeah, all new or first ever, all this other stuff. And it's it's also how I get paid often because they say all new and then I go back and find out that it's not all new and somebody True. pays me to write about it. Mm -hmm. So it works out for me sometimes. But I mean, for me, like from a personal standpoint of how like I view it is if there are parts that interchange with whatever the previous generation is or previous version is, then I consider it a continuation. Okay. So like the LS engines, like that's one of my favorite engines to work with. I love swapping them into stuff, working on them. So like they're basically a small block Chevy. So Chevy's been making small blocks since the 60s. But like the original small blocks, you can't take a crank or a, you know a rod or a wrist pin or an intake from one and put it on an LS or on an LT or on an LT like the new version of the LT. Yeah. And the same thing with the LS. So you have two generations of LS. You have generation three, and generation four, which is like generation three is from ninety nine to two thousand five. Generation four is from like 06 to twenty sixteen, and they have slightly different cranks, but most of the other parts interchange. So mm -hmm. that's a continuation. Okay. And like the LT engines that you see in the Corvette and the Camaro now. Are a whole new like gener whole new generation because none of the parts really interchange even though they're very very similar like in the shape and parts and displacements exactly the same so it's just you know if parts can interchange I consider it a continuation yeah yeah I would agree with that okay but by that measure the Aston <laughs> the Aston V12 yeah. it's, is it's, it's basically a, a Ford Mondeo yeah, yeah, from 1986 yeah, yeah I mean it's and you can uh, you can pull pull parts out of you that can. motor, and they'll, they'll fit in a Duratec out of they a Taurus do. or whatever. Yeah, yeah they I mean, do. That's, it that's, has the yeah. same like rods and pistons and shit as a Taurus. You can find a Taurus <laughs> shop and be like, "How much do you charge for cams?" And then you put it in your Aston Martin. <laughs> All yeah. you gotta do is just weld two together, because you know that's that's kind of what it is. But I mean, that's literally how they started with that engine. And of course, I mean there was fine tuning, but yeah, that's basically what it is. Yeah, we were talking the last show about that Ford Indigo concept from '96. That oh, was the yeah, transverse yeah, yeah. twelve, yeah. and yeah. that engine became. Yeah, that's the it. Yeah, engine. that's exactly it that. That very, kind of like, like very aggressive front end. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. No, it had a fwing. Yeah, that's that's it. That's and it. And the fwing yeah. was a GT3 RS wing that really looked like it was mounted backwards. Interesting. Like, <laughs> very interesting. Like no, look here, look, Zach. I'll get a picture of it. The fwing is very, it's highly, 
highly swingy. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's like. Doesn't that look like a GT3 RS wing in reverse? Yeah, pretty much. Like you won't see anything ever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's you know like what I was thinking of uh, is the Plymouth Prowler. Like this, oh yeah, that's the most similar thing I can think of when trying to think of this. Kind like, of yeah. Yeah, because uh, I mean it's. Oh, you, know, you just ruined it for me wheel. though. <laughs> Uh, oh no, it's, they're very similar. This is better looking. Yeah. Uh, just it fills in the gaps in the rear yeah, fender. Yeah, mm. but I mean, just you know, just imagine that as you know, they were able to get a twelve in this. And yeah, the Prowler had a V six. The Plymouth Plymouth the Plymouth Prowler Plymouth, when that Plymouth, came out, yeah. even I don't remember how old I was. I think it was, it was high school, two thousand something. But I was just ninety six. It came out. Ninety seven. I was, was like the first model year. sad and upset that yeah. it didn't come with a good engine. I was, yeah, me I was too. really like. Yeah. What? Me too. I remember the first year, like a few different like tuner shops yeah. tried yeah. to try to swap a motor. Yeah. Remember someone put just like a two hundred shot. <laughs> someone, <laughs> so, <laughs> not mess with all this fabrication. Somebody stuff. just fucking two hundred <laughs> yeah. shot at it. That's and good. good enough. There's Why just not, not enough room up there for motor. And these bumpers yeah. look plastic. Yeah, they look they look like it came out of yeah, a. They're brutal. It's so bad. I mean, what did that sell for? That I can't read that. Twenty three. Yeah. Meh. I mean, if you want to like... I mean, is it, Bozy, is it possible to fit? Because when this came out, I don't yeah. know if anyone tried an LS. Can you get an LS in there, you think? You could potentially get an LS in there, but it's still a big pain in the ass. <laughs> Just because the subframe is so narrow, uh -huh. so the suspension starts so close to the engine. So, like, you'd have to, like, you'd have to do, like, a dry sumped LS and, like... Weight like you, you still couldn't balance the weight very well. Ugh. Like just what, could, what can, is there anything you can do? Has anyone ever done anything successfully with one of those? I mean, they they put some hemis in sold. there. Yeah, oh, with, they someone put a hemi in yeah, there. Yeah, there's been a few with hemis sticking out the sides. Probably yeah, that engine is huge. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. It's it's much wow. wider than the LS. But people have done hemis because you know Plymouth hemi. Right. You know, it, I mean, it, it makes sense. A lot. Yeah, you really yeah. can't. Yeah. Yeah. What else are you gonna find? Wow, yeah. there's so much room in front yeah. of the yeah. engine. It yeah, does nothing. Narrow, well, yeah. I guess you have that's your suspension, but yeah, that's but so still, weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe if you made like a V-shaped radiator. I mean, you can you can move. Yeah, you can move some stuff around. But <laughs> I don't know. The, the main issue is just that it's narrow. So, yeah. like, if you got like a two JZ, yeah, like a two JZ would be perfect because it's narrow and long, and like you know, it'd be something that you could fit in here. Yeah, but yeah. Paging Hoonigan. Paging Hoonigan. Yeah, there you go. But like <laughs> most people that own Prowlers. Like have a little prowler matching trailer and yeah. you know like polish them up and do all that shit. Like yeah. they're not like I want I power. Know. Like there was like like maybe four people in like ninety seven that wanted to do swaps, <laughs> and then everybody was just everybody else that owns one now. They, they just have a club and they you know go you know go to the diner and hang out. And they you put the what? prowler on the prowl. Like they always yeah. have the toy that sits yeah. on the oh, hood. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It is kind of fun. It's kind of nice though when a collection of people just decides to appreciate something for what it is, yeah. and not try to make it into something yeah. else. No, it's, it's kind of relieving a little bit on them. Uh, it's Good cool. Point. I mean, you know, everybody likes different things and. Hey, if you, that's what you like and you want to hang out and polish the car up, that's cool. You know, everybody's got different Buff type of Buffett, son. Yeah, I mean, different type of enthusiasm. Like, you know, I'm completely different than that. Like, I like to use things. So, yeah, you know, just just tear into it. And, when you know, did you start uh, working on cars? Probably when I was 12. So that kind of goes back to the original story, maybe 11 or 12. So uh, dad, uh, he worked at the factory. He went to work at a factory that made uh, tubes for uh, paper towels, so like the cardboard like piece cardboard in the middle, tubes? yeah, in the middle of a paper towel. So he went there, so that was like a you know a jump from the there, and he was tired of that because <coughs> it was just like really crappy conditions, and so he worked there during the day and went to mechanic school at night. Oh, so like when he was younger, he liked messing around with cars, just doing basic stuff, and he's like, you know, I'm making thirteen dollars an hour here, I can make sixteen dollars an hour as a mechanic, and with flat rate. Once I get better at stuff, I can stack up a whole bunch of hours. So he went to mechanic school. This was in 1998. So I was 12 and uh, he got his ASC certifications. I mean, he went for like a year, basically every single class that you could take just so you could get all these certifications so you could get a job. So he got a job at a Mitsubishi dealer. So that's how like, there's like, I've had like Monteros. Yeah. I've had like. Didn't you start with like a Diamante or yeah, a Galat so I've, or I've something? I've had, yeah, yeah. So I've had like four Diamantes. Boyan's had like two Diamantes. Like <laughs> most people don't have one Diamante. Like, but we've had it's multiple. It's weird to yeah. have even one yeah. Diamante. When they came out with the 3000, did he have a meeting with the other techs yeah. and the boss was like, we're going to be busy. Yeah. We're all buying a boat. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. But that's, that's kind of where my automotive enthusiasm started. So like even as a 12, 13 year old, uh, like, 
because you know he was doing this stuff he was working at the dealership but he was also fixing cars on the side like at the house so he'd like go work at the dealership 50 60 hours a week and then on the weekends people would bring like from the neighborhood would bring their cars to our house and he'd fix them there so like me and boy i would hustle. go yeah i mean Fucking he hustle, was, man. i mean that's, hard. that's like where like you know like both me and boy i just like have like all kinds of gigs going all the time and just working and just you know I'll have basically all kinds of different hustles as we've picked that up from him and my mom yeah. <laughs> because that's what they did like in, in our like formative years when we were young is they just hustled all the yeah. time, worked two, three, four jobs. So he would work on these cars and we'd basically like hold the flashlight, hand him tools and stuff like that, you know, when we were 12, 13, whatever. And that's kind of where we picked up what, you know, tools go where, what things go, you know, wherever. And, you know, he noticed that we liked it. So like when I was 15, I went and got my license in the Bonneville the Bonneville, they bought the Bonneville with like 80,000 miles. And uh -huh. by the time, they, they had it by the time, you know, I had turned 15 and a half when I finished driver's ed. At that time, it had 276. <laughs> so, like, they had, you know, used used it well. But yeah, it was yeah. like the car I got my license in. It was like an extra car they kept because it wasn't worth anything. Yeah. So, I got my license in the Bonneville. And my dad worked at a Mitsub that Mitsubishi dealer at that time. So, he... Uh, whenever people traded in like just like real crappy cars like where people would like come get an estimate for something and it would be like a $3,000 estimate and the car's worth like 1200 <laughs> like he would be like you know if you don't want to fix it I'll yeah, give you I'll give you $500 for it yeah so that's like the first Diamante it was a 92 Diamante and those uh, uh, three liter and some of the 3.5 liter V6s that Mitsubishi used in the late 80s early 90s early 2000s they had issues with valve stem seals so like you know Valve covers had to come off, cylinder had had to come off, all this stuff, and like uh, the valve stem seals weren't expensive themselves. Yeah. They're like two bucks a piece, you know. So there was a Diamante like that that was just like blowing all through the exhaust because the valve stem leaks, valve stem seals were leaking. Mm -hmm. So he bought that for like five hundred dollars, brought it to the house. Fix he's like, it up. he's like, if you can fix this, there's your car right there. I was <laughs> wow. like, it was a decent Diamante. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is this is like you know. 2002, 2001, yeah. it was like a 92 Diamante. So yeah. it was like a nine year old, you know, Mitsubishi that, you know, it was a. It was it a was 92? That was before they got heinous looking, too, yeah, it was right? Like pearl yeah. white 92 Diamante LS. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, exactly like that first. He picture shares right so there. much shape with the Lincoln LS. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah they it's really wild. did. Yeah. But it was a pearl white 92. So he brought that to they the house. They got real ugly later. Yeah, they got squared one, off. Yeah, <laughs> that, but that like was a this pretty was, good one. Yeah, I these, like the squared were, off. Yeah, yeah, these were like pretty decent. And yeah. like, like it was a, it was a like a really, really nice car for like a high schooler because all yeah. my friends had like you know like ratty Civics and all this other stuff. And it's I had, luxury vehicles. Yeah. And like yeah, like I had like uh, you know leather seats. I had a V6 with like 230 horsepower. Yeah. They were all rolling in like 89 Civics with like you know 80 horsepower or whatever. <laughs> And I had an auxiliary input. Oh shit! Yeah. So this car, yeah, it was that was a, like tech. Yeah, like this was a '92. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was a '92. Yeah. <laughs> and it came with the OEM radio with an auxiliary input in 1992. That's pretty wow, awesome. That's, yeah, that's yeah, like, like pretty early. No other car for, in that era that I've owned, I've seen with it. But you yeah. know what? Had I don't, I don't know if it goes back to '92, but my mom's '96 Mercury Villager. Had an really? had an aux input. Not only did it have an aux input, it had rear headphone entertainment with independent controls, which was pretty gangster. That's for ninety six. That's was like the Nautica edition. Bro. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you <laughs> told me about that one. Yeah. yeah. See that's now, the, if I see one, I'm like, yeah. ah, I'll, I'll follow it down the street. <laughs> see, that's do you think? Do you think the Diamante had an aux cable because instead of uh, Mitsubishi paying the cost to get CD players, they were like. What do you have for twelve cents? And they're yeah. like, "We got aux cables yeah. and like put it in." I mean, well, maybe. I mean, I joke, but genuinely, like yeah. that's such a it's, weird it's, thing it's, to have it's, back it's then. It's like completely odd, and I've never really like that dug deep into it. But I owned uh, that Diamante and another Diamante that was like it, and like a '94 3000 GT that basically had the same head unit yeah. and had the same aux like input. Right? Yeah. It was always weird to me, but for me. Uh -huh. It was awesome because I had CDs at that time, so I could like take my CD player. Yeah, your disc man. Yeah, yeah, disc man, and get that you know like three point five millimeter to yeah. three point five millimeter. Plug like it into Wayne's that. Like Wayne's World, dude. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's, 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 that's what I did. Yeah. When'd you yeah. get the CD player, dude? Yeah, yeah. When we got the money. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I had. Yeah, it had like the ten second anti skip. Yeah. So like, it, oh, it would be that was ESP, I remember that. Dude. Yeah. That was huge. Oh, yours only had ten seconds. Yeah. Mine had thirty seconds, bro. Yeah, so you know, big, the, big, the money, big money, big money. And then it was like ESP plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Infinite. Yeah. Stop counting the hours but i mean but that's that's kind of how i started into cars like you know 
my dad said, you know, fix it up. But like he did most of the work on that one. Like mm. we just, I just basically like went through it. He's like, well, do this here, do that here, do this here. But that kind of, you know, just. It was going to be your car. You weren't going to yeah, fail yeah, at that yeah, task. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but things, yeah, yeah, that's exactly like. But when know, did that uh, turn into like putting LS engines into a WRX and stuff like that? So. Well, uh, you did what now? A, a legacy, but yeah. Oh, same, legacy, same, same sorry, deal, yeah. same, same subframe. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Continue. The, uh, I'm trying to think now. So I I got cars and so Fast and Furious had come out and it was like too fast, too furious or something. Mm -hmm. So I had the Diamante. He brought another Diamante home. We sold the first one and fixed the second one. I drove that and I was like, I can't do anything for this. Like I can't modify this. Cause yeah. I was, you know, at that time, like in my mind, I was like, I need to get a cold air intake or do something. Like yeah. I want it to sound cool, put an exhaust on it. I was like, I can't do anything no with this parts. Diamante. I had a legacy GT yeah, at the time. Yeah, like yeah. same thing. You just, you go, all right, well, yeah. uh, pfft, no, yeah, don't make anything. That, that was it. So I was like, I'm gonna sell this Diamante and I'm gonna buy a Mirage. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Cause like the Mirage, yeah. you, know, you know. Do they have parts for the Mirage? Yeah, there were some parts. Yeah, and like you know, in Europe and Japan, they had the Evo mm. in that you know body style, so you yeah. could get like bumpers and stuff. So this is like a 1997 Mirage DE. So like you know, it, it looked. It, looked, that, it was like the one I drove in New Zealand that the guy turned into an Evo. Yeah, yeah but that was a good took one. Took yeah. Evo front yeah. and rear yeah. clips yeah. and yeah. put them on a Mirage yeah, like can. cab. Yeah, but you can do it. It's, it's, it's fucking it's not, sick. Not terribly hard cost some decent money to get those clips but yeah. it, it all fits well it was on an evo chassis okay. that was the yeah, shit yeah. Yeah. but mine was looked like an evo but it had a 1.5 liter with 92 horsepower <laughs> you're like so, this like that yeah yeah it was it was kind of that's like kind of that. evo -y. Yeah, yeah, yeah so i had i traded i traded that front bumper uh i can't remember for what like i i like i bartered up so like i had some like subs I bought from a guy for like 50 bucks and then I traded that for some wheels that were worth like 200 bucks and basically bartered my way up to a f evil front bumper. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> so I put that evil front bumper on and like it didn't come with fogs, so I went to like the trailer store and found like <laughs> lights that matched the hole in the bumper. There you so go. So I had like trailer lights that were in the holes, but it looked like it should fit. And uh, this is you. <laughs> this is you. That's yeah, so fucking great. It's, it's very similar to that. It was silver, yeah. but it was very it's very similar look to that one. Yeah, fiberglass front bumper. But that was like my first kind of like on my own working on cars. So I enjoyed, I enjoyed like you know being able to do that so like yeah. then i found an intake and like i think i started like fabricating stuff and i say fabricating with like quotation marks because like <laughs> we were using like pvc pipe and yeah, all this yeah. to build like a cold air intake so like you know 17 year olds trying to like experiment mm -hmm. so after a while we figured out like that we were doing like all this dumb shit like where we could do something cool so i actually had a legacy so like I had a bunch bunch of other Mitsubishis. I had a Montero Sport, which was actually pretty fun. Mm -hmm. Like went off roading and it did all kinds of stuff. I had uh, a Suzuki. I can't remember now. It's not a Sidekick, but it's the like slightly bigger the than Grand a Sidekick. Tracker. Vitara. Yeah, something like that. It was the square one, maybe Tracker, but it was a square one like from the late nineties. But I had one of those. Uh, yeah. So I had a couple like off roady oh, cars. Not a, not that oh, small, yeah. but maybe side. Maybe it was a Sidekick. So I had that, and then I bought uh, a two thousand Subaru Legacy GT. So this is like when they were non turbo. Like yeah, it was two point five. Yep, two point yeah. five, like one hundred and seventy horsepower or something like that. Yeah, so, I had I had that one too. Yeah, I had a ninety eight. So, yeah. nice actually, yeah, but so, slow and yeah. not mod not yeah, modable. Yeah. So like yeah. I found out very quickly, like it was a cool car, it was a decent price, but you can't do much with it. Yeah. So like uh, I actually started doing some research and figured out that they had the B four in Japan. So I started going through part numbers and figured out like what stuff fit it. So yeah. I found these coilovers that fit and found all these other parts. I had like all these like lists of part numbers of things that could fit. So every every now and then I would search for these part numbers to see if like anybody in the US showed them. So like, I don't know, I had the car for six or seven months and I was searching these numbers and one of the coilover part numbers popped up at a, a, a T in like T-I-N that, that makes coilovers, like you oh, know, the yeah. ones with the green logo. Yeah. Uh, that there was some in a warehouse here on the West Coast in Benicia. Okay. So I called them and I was like, hey, is like a JDM set of coilovers for a 2000 Legacy GT. Like there was no reason for it to be in the US. It's like, hey, you guys are showing this part number on your website. Do you have this part? He's like, He's like, yeah, we have one set here. He's like, we've never sold one of these. <laughs> so he went and looked, and apparently somebody had like packed it by mistake. Oh shit! In Japan, so he's like, 
He's like, well, it's going to cost us this much to send it back. He's like, how much you want to pay for it? So I was like, oh, 300. He's like, okay. You just wow. made them an offer yeah. on it? Yeah. They it's, weren't even like, yeah. well, they're $950. Nope. So do you yeah. No, I'm just, <laughs> just, just haggle. Whoever was on the phone yeah. was, should have just been like, yes, they're here. Would yeah. you like to buy them? Yeah. Like, that was yeah. like the guy didn't know. Like it wasn't in his catalog <laughs> yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that's how the modding on the legacy started. So well, like, and the digging through part numbers yeah, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that's like yeah, a lot of that comes from there. Yeah, like just random stuff like that. So I would dig through other stuff. I found out like uh, like the Outback had uh, bigger brake rotors and calipers, and I figured out that I could get these brackets from something else to uh -huh. fit bigger brakes. And that's kind of how like a lot of the part number stuff started. Is like I figured I could combine these things to make this better. Well, I mean, what BMW M does like a lot yeah. of the yeah. time or did was just like take shit off the seven series, put it in the three series, like mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's... like it's pretty tried and true method. Yeah. Well, why not? Yeah. I mean, it's and if you can use an OEM part, yeah. it's even better. I mean, and even now like working on race cars, like you have all these specialized racing parts mm -hmm. and a lot of them aren't really specialized racing parts. So like I've worked on one race car that has an X-Track sequential gearbox. Okay. So it has all these like specialty sensors and all these wiring harnesses that you have to buy just like from these guys in the UK. So I was working on one and we had needed some temperature sensors. So we had used the spare and we needed to have a spare on the shelf for this race. So the one we took out that was broken, he's like, you know, the guy knows that I can look this stuff up. He's like, figure out how we can get this in the next, you know, like three hours. Yeah. So I went, looked at a sensor and I never recognized the connector. And the connector type was a Bosch connector type used in a lot of German cars like uh -huh. in the late 90s. So basically just went online and, you know, picked out some some ideas that I had and then started matching up markings. And it ended up that this, you know, extra gearbox that's used in brand new race cars right now uses a coolant temperature sensor from an E36 318Ti <laughs> yeah. Whoa. As, as its fluid yeah. temperature sensor here. And Bosch Motorsport basically uses a variant of that sensor. But like a lot of stuff, you know, carries over like that. Especially because so, so many OEMs use Bosch shit. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. it crosses over. Yeah. Like when we were at the rental car company yeah. and like, not that like they would necessarily like quote cheap out on things that were crucial to safety, but yeah. like, I just I have such a distinct memory seared in my brain of learning that the seat motor in the Ferrari five ninety nine uh, that the dealer wanted twelve hundred dollars for sure. was like an eighty five dollar Bosch part yeah. that goes in for uh, everything. Yeah, like Fiat's and yeah, all Alphas kinds of bullshit. and BMWs, yeah. maybe. Oh, yeah. And I was like, Oh, and then I found out from my, my Vanquish they yeah. wanted twenty seven hundred dollars for a fuel pump. Yeah. Well it turns out the fuel pump is out of the fucking Ford Super Duty. Yeah. It's like 187 yep, bucks yep, at AutoZone. Yep. It's horse shit. Yep. All of this stuff is such horse shit. So yeah. like being able to like yeah. do that is I mean, amazing. Because I mean, it, it the, the same way that like an OEM, if they're going to buy Brembo's, yeah. they're going to put on like a Hellcat. I'm just using, just yeah. picking it random. If two years later they can say, now we're offering the Challenger Scat Pack with the same brakes, yep. ooh, that comes on the Hellcat, yep. it works for advertising, yep. but it also means that they can probably get those parts yeah. at a cheaper yeah. price initially. Yeah. Bigger and quantity. Bosch or whoever, Brembo, whoever, like they don't want to make eight million different little individual nope. parts like there's only yeah. so many numbers in you know in the <laughs> like yeah, in the count in the calculator yeah and that's that's the thing with all this stuff like there's there's like three or four usually different uh sizes of like brembo calipers like four piston or six mm -hmm. piston calipers so most of the cars on the road use one of those four and they have the general shape and what they do is when they tune it for a specific car they change the piston sizes inside them so like the external case on mo on many will look similar. It's yeah. just they have different size yeah. pistons. So some have even size pistons. Some have a larger leading piston and a smaller trailing piston, or the opposite. And then some are almost exactly the same with just differences in mounting. So if you take like a 2011 Camaro SS front brake caliper and put it beside a 2013 Tesla Model S front brake caliper, they look exactly the same. And the like seals, the mounting bracket is just yeah, in a just, slightly just, different yeah, the place. The mounting bracket, wow. the bolts are just different spacings, yeah. and that's why you know they're different parts. But Brembo will you know knock all these things out and then just modify them slightly for each manufacturer as the manufacturer does their tuning and development. Mm -hmm. So you know they may get a certain size caliper that has a universal mount, and then you know manufacturers will do a few years of development and say this is what we want it to look like now. But a lot of this stuff is not that unique. You know, even though it's, it is different and prices can range widely. It's so the day that like you learn that exotic cars are not necessarily made yeah, of exotic yeah. parts. Yeah, like 
Yeah, like, you know, these things are not special. <laughs> no. And I think, you know, not to, like, especially, like, you know, this this little red car I've got in the garage, yeah. this Countach, yeah. like, the parts that, like, it's a big V12, but, like, yeah. the valves and shit aren't, yeah, like, like, special. Yeah, like, they're, like, Like, you know, nothing on it is particularly special. There's except, just like, a lot of it. Yeah. Except the body work, I yeah, guess, yeah. you know, I mean, but, like, yeah. the rest of it's just sort of, like, normal old shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, there's levels. Like, if they're going to make titanium valve stems for something, yeah. you know, for, for a Lamborghini, the company doesn't need to then make, like, use different metallurgy to make different valve stem of stems for like a high performance Ford. Sure. Yeah. Like yeah. you use the same ones. But exactly. I know what you mean where you kind of go, Oh, I thought it was all bespoke, you know? Yeah. Well, like some <laughs> things like in the engine, but like all cars, no matter how exotic, like have a lot of like similar functions they need mm -hmm. to do like temperature sensors and pumping fuel and like filtering air. And like, I wouldn't be surprised if 80% of the cars on the road use the same fucking HVAC setup. Oh, it's like, very similar. I mean, <laughs> yeah, if you, that, the, the blower motors are some of the like most common things you can find on stuff. So yeah. you'll find like the, going back to the Tesla, the Model S uses the same blower motor as I think like a Hyundai Accent. Isn't the, mo the like the Model S is particularly good at hiding yeah, like yeah, the fact that yeah. it's got a lot of recycled yeah, yeah, because, shit. Yeah, because <laughs> when they started, uh, when they started building the Model S, they didn't have any big contracts. Like they couldn't negotiate with tier one suppliers. Yeah. So like they had some stuff they did with Ford. They had some stuff they did with Daimler, and Daimler actually partnered with a them. Top off there. Yeah, yeah. Give me a, give me a. Little We're top on to off the there. bookers. We All finished. Right. We finished the. Um, the lightweight we Lotus. Finished the yeah. Lotus. Yeah. Uh, this the Colin Chapman. Uh, the English. <laughs> Booker, Zach, do you want some of this? I'm good. Booker's is like 44% rising, right? yeah. a little Booker's higher. Booker's is excellent. I like this. It is it's very a little good. more than normal, but I can't recall. Uh, it's somewhere. Yeah. Oh, 60? 64. All right. That's good. That's good. You usually uh, notice, uh, yeah. yeah. That's mm. good. But not, it has a smooth. I mean, it has a yeah, good Yeah, no, feeling, it's delicious. But. Um, oh, the blower motors? Yeah. Tesla. Yeah. Oh, Tesla. Yeah, they, yeah. they couldn't negotiate for the big contracts. So, like, like, switch gear and a lot of the stuff inside is like mercedes parts mm -hmm. so like i did window switches yeah shifters, like, yeah, yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, like all that yeah. stuff like that he has mercedes parts and then they have a bunch of ford parts like the accelerator pedal on the model s is from like a 2007 ford fusion yeah, yeah. stuff like that because they could buy existing parts mm -hmm. and then fabricate their car around it is that more or less of a sin than like let's call it a two million dollar or three million dollar Zonda having an engine block from a 1995 Mercedes SL 73. You know, I don't know. It, it, it just depends. Like stuff you can't see, like that accelerator pedal right. on the Model S. Like you just see a plastic pad. Yeah. Like, and you press it, and it does what it needs to do. Like that's fine. But like, and even the engine, I would say in that Zonda, like if it makes the power, most people that own it aren't going to care. It's. I think they. I think they like that engine. I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. And I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm. I'm just trying to like. Yeah. I'm actually trying to give Tesla a little bit of the yeah. benefit of the yeah. doubt in and that. I think. That I think that's completely fine what they did with the Model S. Yeah. Like because if they hadn't done that, if they had spent big money on trying to lure these suppliers to build parts for them, they probably would have spent a whole bunch more money on the Model S, and you know the price would have gone up very quickly. Yeah. So I mean, I can understand that. And like all the stuff that's hidden underneath. Like, when are you ever going to look at a blower motor unless it breaks? No, I don't give a shit yeah, about a blower like, motor. Yeah, like I, I, not, I just think, know. I think it's, I think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's just interesting to talk about how, yeah, yeah. And that's, how many, many, yeah, many exotic yeah, cars yeah. use some really yeah. normal ass oh, parts. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it's, it's, it, the more noticeable it is, the bigger problem. And I realize that sounds dumb, yeah. but like if every, if the first things you touch when you get in an exotic or performance car, yeah. you know, window switches, well, HVAC, door handles, yeah. door yeah. handles yeah. are always yeah. when yeah. they're shared or right. annoying. That's yeah. egregious. But if it's, if it, I mean, Zonda, they make, you know, yeah. they make their own like underwear, but yeah. <laughs> uh, if everything that you, you kind of interact with is really special or looks special, and then a couple of things that you don't touch a lot are, are shared, I, I find it, it's less offensive. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And that's like Aston's in the nineties. Like they use like Mazda door. Oh handles. bro. Yeah. I got a, I got yeah. a list. Yeah. I got a list. I got, I, my vanquish, yeah. which is an O three. Oh yeah. Even then. Yeah. All Ford parts. Everywhere. I've got, I've got Volvo a Jaguar parts. key. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a uh, Volvo air vents. Yeah. I've got Jaguar HVAC. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Here, pull up, pull that up. Can you get a, can you full screen that one? I've got Jaguar yeah. stereo, Jaguar HVAC. The seats are made by Recaro. They're the same as the Audi uh, S4, if you'll okay. notice. The, the B5 yeah. or B6 yeah. S4. That, that steering wheel was in, like, every, like, 
non unbranded European car. It was like Roof, Weiss, yeah, Weissman, yeah. like <laughs> every, yeah. Kate, everybody yeah, used that one steering wheel. Certified for airbags and it goes in everything. I actually, I really, that's, I think, my least favorite part. Of it. I, yeah. I think I hate that. I think I like I mean, that. That's not, a DB, that's a Jag or yep. something. Is that a Jag? Um, that's a Jag. Led, this I mean, has led me somewhere it's, weird. It's, yeah, you're on. You're in the weeds yeah. now. But um, yeah, <laughs> lots of Ford. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And I, I don't resent it that much, yeah. actually. I mean, now, like at this point, like if you have something that fails, like you could probably pull the part out, look at the part number, and instead of paying some guy in the UK five hundred dollars, <laughs> you might be able to go to the Ford dealer maybe. and pay fifty dollars. Well, yeah, maybe we did it with the fuel pump. Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> we, there's I, a whole we bunch of other went parts. Went to so. yeah. <laughs> Why and not? they've gotten better hiding stuff because, like, you're Aston. You know, it's uh, the buttons like on the center console, like on the HVAC, are like yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah, it's like glaring at well, you. Well, that's that's <laughs> real '90s Jaguar. Yeah. It is. Just you know. stick oh, it in there. Wait, speaking of uh, speaking of being able to go to the other dealers, like you uh, you did a nice a- analysis of like Supra, yeah. and basically yeah. that like because I because like here's the thing, I went to the yeah. launch for yeah. Supra, yeah. and forgetting the pretense of Supra, yeah. right? Yeah. Forgetting what it looks yeah. like, it's just like. Here's a sports car. Yeah. Drive it. Yeah. I found it lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Every, I thought it was yeah. great. Have you driven one yet? I have not. No. They're great yeah. to drive. Everybody I've talked to that's driven one, and even some of the professional drivers that are you know yeah. have driven one. Everybody's very they're fun like, as very, shit. Very very pleased with them. Yeah, but so, you like you you know you said like yeah. Yeah. they fed us yeah. a story yeah. that was sort of like Separate okay we agreed yeah. on a wheelbase yeah. and we agreed on a displacement and yeah. this and then we sort of yeah. went our own ways yeah. and but if you actually look at the parts in the car which i didn't do but yeah. you certainly yeah. did that story doesn't no. really hold much no. water does it yeah no it's it's what I is mean, your version of the story so, based on the hardware in the car so i went to the bmw uh, epc so uh go uh, go on hunable h-o-n-a-b-l-e.com that you'll see like all the all my stories there, you'll be able to find the super. I didn't realize you actually used the website. Uh, it used to be my personal blog before I started like oh. pitching people. Oh, so I and can then read I convert- you in long form and, and not just on Twitter? Well, well, then I converted it into a portfolio. So whenever one of my stories goes up, a link goes to it there. Mm. So uh, there this we go. Yeah, yeah. That's it, Don Haggerty. So basically, I pulled up the part catalog for the Z4 and for the Supra and just started going down the list. So stuff like that I know matters, like when I tune, like adjust race car setup on race cars, you know, you know, camber toe and stuff like that. These adjustments, like, is there a difference here? Mm-hmm. Like did Toyota actually go in and say, we built our own parts or even just a different adjustment. So what I found out is the Supra, like the complete rear subframe basically and all the rear control arms are from the new three series. So like all that separate development, like it's not there. Like they yeah. just took the parts from the three series. Did they reinforce the subframe on that? Do you, think, series by do you think they said? Like, yeah, do you think experience. they said you may use yeah. anything from our catalog yeah. that you deem yeah. appropriate yeah. for it's, the Supra? Yeah, I think I think what happened is BMW did a lot of development, and then Toyota did like kind of what you would do with the race car, basically, where they got a car that was kind of a blank slate and mm-hmm. then they took it on a track and they're like, well, let's adjust this a little bit. Yeah, Let's move the wheels in a little bit here. Let's change the tool a little bit here. So what I found is the rear suspension is all BMW off the shelf stuff. The front suspension, other than one of the toe, sets of toe links, uh, is pretty much all from the Z4. Okay. So they, they changed the toe a little bit in the front for what I remember from the Z4 and they changed the ride height. And I figured that out because BMW uses ride height sensors and they have a few different calibrations. So they have a few different part numbers for ride height sensors. Uh. So if uh, cars are a similar height, they'll have the similar arm for the sensor, but the Z4 and the Supra have different part numbers. So Mm. they have adjustments there in ride height and possibly in camber, but there's kind of a whole detailed explanation in that story. But the thing is, is that they're pretty much the same car as far as suspension setup goes. Yeah, and even power, like the reason a lot of people are seeing uh, more power on the dyno for the Supra is because it's probably making more power than what's advertised. So oh like, yeah, yeah, like it runs the same ECU, all this, all the same stuff. Like so, they, are they not seeing that in the on the Z4? 
They only sing in the Supra? Well, they're seeing it above advertised. So uh, like the Z4 okay. has the 375 oh, or oh, 385. The Z, but no one's uh, probably dyno yeah, testing yeah. the Z4. Well, yeah. no, they just put yeah. the same engine in both cars yeah, 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 and yeah. say it makes yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. Th that's called a McLaren. Yeah. Or in, so, in an Audi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I actually, I actually did a story on that too. So I went through both engines. I think I wrote that for Jalopnik maybe. In a McLaren or in the, no, in the, 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 the Supra? BMW and Z4, oh, yeah, like yeah. when it was supposed to come on. Like a lot of the parts are shared. And then a lot of the parts in the Supra, they just pulled from the other inline sixes. So it has, I think, like an oil pump out of an X5. Yeah. But like the main engine, like pistons, a crankshaft pistons, rods are the same between both engines, the 385 or whatever it is, horsepower in the Z4 and the 335 in the Supra. But like the turbo is slightly bigger. There's a few other like small differences. But even still, the Supra makes more power, I think, than, than is advertised. Wait, turbo is bigger in which car? I'm sorry. On the Z4. Okay. So the Z4 is like I think it's 375 or uh -huh, 385. Right. I can't remember now. And then like the Supra is 335, and there's a 335 Z4, and like the engine, turbo, and everything that are in the Supra are directly from the Z4 in Europe. Right, right. Because they're rated for the same power. So it's, I mean, it's interesting stuff. Like yeah. I, it's weird that how how far. I mean, they went like. When I tell you they went pretty far out of their way to give us this story. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I think I think they saw, I think, because they gave us the story after we drove. Yeah. And so I think everybody got out of the cars and went, you know, these things are great, but they are very, very BMW. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what, yeah. I mean, that's what I said. I go, look, this yeah. is, this thing is really nice, yeah. but like. I can. There's a lot of BMW here, obviously, and uh, I think they really wanted to, to yeah. drive home their point, and this I think it us, wasn't. Yeah. Really true. I mean, it's, it's just that's 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 just how it is. I mean, it's the same thing. Dude, with did you see the uh, the launch edition fucking tank on Bring a Trailer? Oh, I didn't. I saw it when it went up on Twitter the bid, other day, but I didn't see it finish. Bid up to a thousand under sticker. No shit. Yeah, fifty six k. The sticker expect, on it is uh, fifty seven. Yeah, I expected that to go for like seventy or. No, something. I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought yeah, it would yeah. get five or yeah, six yeah, over, yeah, like, yeah. and just be like, like yeah, so okay. I really wanted one. Yeah. Stay behind the fucking mic, Bozy. Oh, pardon, you're, you're pardon on a me. Radio pardon, show. Pardon me. For fuck's uh, sake. Usually my... we put people with headphones on so that they can hear themselves yeah. and they get away from the mic, but not you. It's because you've been at racetracks. I remember yeah, we uh, were uh, we were on a text road with like Parker Kligerman and Lee Keen for Proving Grounds, which uh, is on Sundays, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and and the launch edition gets advertised, and Parker's like, "What do you guys think?" And we're just like, "Do not do this." <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, what he was gonna bid? No, no, not not bid on bringing each other. He was oh. like, "Should I?" He was like, "Should I buy one?" Do you think it's gonna oh. appreciate? Do you yeah. think this is gonna oh, be yeah, a thing? We're like, no, it's gonna be a car that's painted black. Yeah. It's gonna be a <laughs> good car. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, all the NASCAR guys. So I mean, I. I, I Kligerman, he drives a Toyota, so I'm sure that's why he was looking at it. But Probably. Yeah. Like, there's a whole bunch of Supras rolling around Mooresville right now because, like, all the NASCAR guys, like, are buying them. Yeah. And TRD I think guys they're good looking. Them. I bet they're fun. Yeah. Like, I have yeah. nothing against the yeah. car yeah, yeah, yeah. itself. I just thought that that was, like, yeah. no, if it you wasn't go out, special enough. Yeah. yeah, if you go spend $52,000 on a regular Supra, yeah. you're getting, yeah. you're absolutely getting oh, yeah. that your oh, money's oh, worth. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, definitely. But it's not. On a, something that's not a limited yeah, product, no. you shouldn't spend a dime over yeah. it. I think I think the hype has ended. Yeah. There's a red one sitting yeah. right here, yeah. really? under outside under like not, uh, at a dealer, <laughs> on uh, under a tent oh, outside. Uh, not it's gonna be room, there huh? for fucking six months, yeah. I guarantee. Because they probably want eighty grand for the stupid thing. Yeah. And that's ridiculous. I haven't, I haven't looked yet to see if they've started coming across the auctions, but I've seen my first one in person the other day. I saw yeah. it, like you know, because they're it's little, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's very small. It's small. I mean, I've seen it at the auto shows and stuff, but seeing it on the road, like rolling beside like an F one fifty, it's like damn. It's like, basically yeah. the same size it, as an eighty six. Yeah, it pretty is. Much. It is, yeah. and, it, and it's shorter. Yeah, like it, it's it's ridiculous. Like seeing it at an auto show, you know, it's got its display and lifted yeah. up. It doesn't seem that small, but right. like, when it's on the road, it's like. Wow, it's a little car. Yeah, yeah, but I mean that's why it weighs. You know, it doesn't weigh a lot, and you know it's it's you know pretty responsive. Um, yo, get in the super chat if you're with us live. It's probably it's late as fuck for a lot of you. So, um, yeah, it's what, what is it now? East Coast. Yeah, yeah East Coast. Oh, is oh, it's eleven thirty. Yeah. 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 So if you're yeah. with us, get in the super chat. We're gonna do a few more minutes and then can go to your questions before we get out of here because neither Bose nor I has had dinner. Yeah. And he just got off a flight, so we're not gonna yeah. we're not gonna fucking kill him tonight. Um, <laughs> but uh, um. Oh, so taking Tesla at the Nurburgring. Oh, so. We have to talk about this because it's yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I made some comments about this on Twitter yesterday, and then I woke up this morning, and there's just like notifications from like all over the place. Like <laughs> Tesla disaster. fans, Tesla detractors, like everybody's got an opinion. Yeah. So, like, the gist of it is, like, and I've talked about this in the past, is with these records, like, they're. 
are a few official testing sources and there are a few unofficial testing sources. So like El Laguna, which is one of the places where like, you know, the Tesla has been tested. Mm. There's no like official like testing procedure or certification procedure. Like all the Laguna records are just kind of written down. And most of them are when Motor Trend rents the track yeah. and Randy Popes goes out and drives a car and they post the time in their video and that's used kind of as the citation for the fastest car at Laguna Seca. Pretty much just accepted yeah, casual yeah, yeah, practice. Yeah, like everybody knows that, you know, like Popes is not going to like mess around. Like they're going to act, you know, yeah. he's going to act as an independent party and Motor Trend's renting the track out. But like going from that is like, on some days they might go to the track and it's 60 degrees. On some days they might go to the track and it's 95 degrees. On some days it might be slightly damp. Some days it's not. So like all these outside conditions affect these records. And the same thing with the Nurburgring, and especially so because especially yeah because Laguna Seca is short. So like you, you'll do you know a minute and a half or two minute lap you know in that range depending on how fast the car is, where the Nurburgring is you know eight or nine times longer yeah and it could be raining on half the track correct yeah because it's so so spread out so like all these Nurburgring rap the laps like the kba which is like uh i don't know like the dot or something like that of germany like they have some official categories during official record runs where they like list cars so the 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 taycan or taycan i still haven't figured out how that taken taken yeah taken uh, you know, taken yeah, yeah. so and by the way, I just so you know, the yeah. Lotus Electric, how do yeah. you know? It's yeah. E V I J A. Yeah. Just take it away. It's Avaya. Avaya. I learned yeah. that from the Lotus guys. Okay, good yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> Taken. Uh, yeah, Taken. So the Taken did a run and it was, you know, publicity here in like August or something, record run for four door electric sedan. The only issue is that the KBA doesn't have a category for four door electric <laughs> sedan. So like Porsche just made that category up. They're like, we're just gonna yeah. do this. And like they set that record. Casual uh, acceptance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like first <laughs> yeah, pretty much like, like first of all, like that record doesn't really exist, <laughs> but it exists in their mind. And like, you know, yeah. and like that's the thing with like press release journalism. Like they'll put that press release out and it's gonna be on fifty sites and fifty blogs. Because yeah. no nobody Maybe like Maybe it gets clarified later, yeah, yeah, but, but not like, nearly nobody as like, much as the yeah, original story. Yeah, like for, for stuff like that, little quick hits like you exciting, like nobody's gonna do like background research on it. <laughs> like it's and like you know and that's just especially you know. when there's a video yeah, and yeah, the video yeah. is presumably yeah, real yeah, yeah, yeah. and so you go well, okay no one's gonna be like wait is that a real record yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. but they yeah. sent out the press well, release I mean, the first record is always the first record yeah. like you know yeah, in 40 yeah. years true. there'll yeah. be a lot of them that's someone true, yeah. does yeah. have to set the pace yeah correct and it's fucking fast it's very fast it is Did very you watch fast video yeah it's very fast He's so mommy <laughs> so so what i and that's the thing what i got out of that like the time is very good, but the main thing that most people should get out of that is that it was able to do a lap successfully at full pace for the whole lap. Totally. Like, that's that's like what you should get like out of that. Not yeah. that it's at this time and now the Model S is gonna get all this stuff and do this time. And if the Model S is able to get close to that time or beat it, like hats off to them that would be extraordinary but yeah, it, it would be very extraordinary but apparently they have some new motors and stuff but that's the thing is like most of these electric cars on the Nurburgring unless they were like one-off specials like the VW IDR and stuff yeah. like that most of them couldn't complete a whole lap I mean haven't people tried to run stock Model S's on yeah, the Nurburgring yeah, so and been fully unsuccessful at yeah, it yeah so I know that um, Can you look up Nurburgring times and see if on the Wikipedia yeah, if anyone's yeah. run a Model S in a complete lap? And at any Jalopnik time. had a story today that they they yeah. think uh, that there's an asterisk basically that Elon has built in where he's bringing a seven seat Tesla yeah. so that he'll be setting the seven yeah, seat that's it. sedan. So record. that's a whole new Get whole new level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. So he's bringing one with those seats in the hatch, you know. But uh, there was a Model S. A P85D, like a 2014 or 15, that did complete a lap, and I think it was like eight and a half minutes. So, whatever. Right, well, uh, if it yeah. can complete a lap, yeah. that's so, a starting place. But it was modified for like extra yeah. cooling. And that's, oh. if you if you look at the Tesla, if the Model S, the Tesla is doing at the Nurburgring route, like it doesn't look terribly different. But if you start to look at the details, you'll notice things. So you'll notice that like the the f the front entry for the cooling system is like almost double the size now. So like so the grill in the middle, there's a splitter on the front that's been expanded, stuff like that. 
2015, a P85D did it in 850. That's oh, it. Okay. That's, that's the car I was thinking of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I it, mean, I mean, something Porsche has pointed out a lot with the take-in is like the zero to sixty, but they're like yeah. you can do it 26 times in a row. Yeah. yeah. So they're really saying we can perform at the same level over and over, yeah. or for a long duration, yeah. like on the Nurburgring I mean, that's versus how their the, gas the Tesla. cars are. Yeah. yeah. They're ga- Remember, you know, you can you can launch a yeah. Turbo yeah. S a hundred times yeah. in a row, yeah. and the car couldn't possibly give a fuck. Yeah, that's that's exactly, and that's that's the thing that people should take away from this. Which almost nobody that like replying to me or like throwing <laughs> stuff at me on Twitter. And no, like what I sending, saw yeah, is a consistent yeah, seven yeah, minutes yeah, yeah. of someone that's the beating thing. the shit out of an yeah, electric yeah. car. Like if you can do that, then that's a step forward. Yeah, mm-hmm. like if you can do that and repeat it to do it for multiple laps, that's going to be another step forward. And you know if you can do that and be fast, like it's it's just steps yeah. forward. But that's you know that'll be the test. It'll be this will definitely be on Top Gear in a year, maybe two. But they're gonna drag race, take in and model. You know P one hundred. Yeah. P one hundred will win yeah. to one hundred and thirty or whatever, and they'll yeah. go. Let's do it again. Yeah. And again. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. again. And, like and then the we'll see what around, happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But and I think Porsche is doing a test slash publicity stunt where they run one for 24 straight hours only stopping to charge it at a track yeah, at yeah. Daytona or something they, uh, they, they did it like, Nardo yeah, Nardo, yeah, Nardo yeah. I think I think they did it somewhere over there already they did it already yeah oh, okay, they already cool. did it yeah. what um oh wait shit blanking wait uh, uh, pfft, uh pfft. oh no Porsche track Nürburgring God mother oh the model okay the actual cars that Tesla sent over yeah. there by so, the way did you see one on the one on the expired California yeah, yeah. So tag I actually, I, actually find, I actually I was the one that pulled that up initially so like I was, you see that shit yeah, Zach yeah. what the so, model S tell me yeah, yeah so like I was I was yeah, I was I was like I got to the house last night I was like eight or nine o'clock and I was like let me pull out my laptop see what's going on so all these people had tweeted at me and I saw these pictures so I was like, let me run this tag through through my little Carfax deal. This is the Model S spotted in front of the Piston Classa at yeah, the Nürburgring, yeah, which exactly. is Sabina yeah. Schmitz's family's restaurant yeah. where you eat steak on a stone. Yeah. yeah. So I pulled up the tag and like had it like reversed. So I did a window decoder and found out it was the 2017 Model S, which is kind of weird. And I posted that up and... I can't remember who it was now, but somebody that follows me went and did the full report and they found out that it was like a 27, 2017 Model S that was a lemon buyback <laughs> that Tesla had bought back based on the, you know, the VIN I had posted. Oh so God. later, like after we dug through it, we found out that it was like a Model S that was a lemon buyback and which is not a terrible idea, like using it as a development car because they don't have to build a whole new car. Yeah. So my guess is that Tesla had to buy this car back because it had some kind of issue. Then they stripped everything out other than the chassis. And now they just stick all these kind of development parts on it. Right. A, Which know, in and of itself yeah. is not yeah. a problem. Yeah. But if that's what you were going yeah. to do, yeah. okay, if you're going to base your development mule yeah. on a yeah. buyback lemon law car, would you send it to the Nürburgring with an expired yeah. oh, California yeah. Yeah. license yeah, an expired plate on it? Yeah, in June it? too, yeah, yeah. Which Dude, is, it's got a fucking traceable license plate. Yeah, you just yeah. type it in and it says yeah. lemon on it. Like, what, how, yeah. what kind of a fucking idiot are you to do Very that? True. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> like stuff like that is just like discrepancies like that, like you would think that people would take care of. And like it didn't have a front plate until this morning, which, you know, it's who knows what they were thinking or what they were doing. They just had a rear plate, even though I think front plates are required here, right? Well, so, yeah, I mean... It, in general, this is just kind of a dumb situation. Yeah. You can get a temporary registration for this thing in Germany to test it, yeah, right? It's and that's good what for they 30 days, and that's what they, they have eventually now. Did. Yeah, yeah. But when the car got there, yeah. it was literally sitting on this expired, because the, the, I could tell the sticker was yeah. blue. It wasn't fucking yellow. <laughs> right. So it's an expired, expired sticker <laughs> on this tag that was just traceable to a Lemon Law buyback. Yeah. And it's like... Okay. Like, all, right, all right. Fine. You got your temporary reg, but you yeah. let everybody take pictures yeah, of this yeah. plate that leads like, to a lemon law claim. You yeah, they idiot. Should, they should have used like one of their manufacturer tags, which are not traceable at all. Like yeah. the, the you know the MFG tags. Like you can't trace those at all because they're not assigned to a specific right. car. It's just like it's, yeah. it's just yeah. like it says Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they should just use one of yeah. those. Like the, what what you see on the press cars and stuff. Yeah. So like hardcore Tesla yeah. fucking bros are yeah. all. It's just a development mule. What's the big deal? Everyone's yeah. got development yeah. mules. It's like. Um, it's is obviously Elon going send some cars over yeah, there right now. Yeah. Get some fucking wide body and kits thing. and gurney yeah. flaps going. Yeah. Like, let's go. Like all these people <laughs> tweeting at me, like, well, well, this is better than this, and like a lot of it is like, 
hey, like I said this like two days ago or three days ago, like all these people tweeting, well, the take can like yesterday I hadn't I hadn't mentioned the tie can or take can, whatever it is, like at all the whole day. Yeah. Or even today, like I was just talking about the Tesla, the one at, at Laguna Seca, I went to Nürburgring and just kind of, you know, sharing my observations on Twitter. And all these Tesla fans were tweeting at me about the Taycan. I was like, I have not mentioned this thing once. And they're like, well, the Taycan did this and they had a roll cage in it. I was like, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> put like, roll cages you want in those cars. Yeah, like I said that like, you know, their yeah. record doesn't count because it's not an official category yet. Like, I you know. No, it's just the, the, yeah. the humor in the situation yeah. is yeah. that it's so obvious he decided to do this five days mm -hmm. ago. <laughs> just yeah. said like, get yeah. it done. Yeah. And like, didn't understand like, yeah. think of like, you been, have you been in the Nürburgring? I have not, no. Zach's been. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. been. Yeah. The the resources yeah, that well, the OEMs put yeah, into this it's, shit. It's wild. I mean, I know how the in industry pool works and all that other stuff. Yeah. I know I know a lot of these guys that work on like OEM stuff that work also work on you race just cars. Show up and run. Yeah, yeah. Like these guys <laughs> like, these guys, if they want to do something like this, like they'll pick out like four or five cars and then they'll take them over there and yeah. then for like twelve or fifteen or sixteen weeks. They'll just test every day. Yeah. Whenever they have industry pool time, they'll just test, take data, test, take data, test, take data. And then after they've completed that 12 or 15 or 16 weeks, then they'll actually attempt to run. And then they'll record the run. And after they know it's all good, then they'll do PR stuff. But, but like, also, we're not, we're not talking about a, the car you're buying right yeah, now either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even it's... Yeah. The cars but, they've got, like, all right, maybe this yeah, is a mule for yeah. like my my theory is they will come out with some wide body yeah, down Nürburgring force edition, Nürburgring package. Yeah. They'll build five hundred and one, yeah. and that'll be yeah, that. Yeah, Which, and it'll have plaid mode because yeah, yeah. Elon's. <laughs> yeah, he's just. Yeah, <laughs> when, uh, Blake Blake had a great tweet today that said, "I think Elon's only seen space balls." <laughs> <laughs> that's true because that's where all the jokes go. That's where all the jokes go. Which I mean. It's it's not singling him out because other people have done it too. There's a GTR Nurburgring edition. There's all these other cars, yeah. and that's fine. I like that's like that's the thing that I think that Elon's gonna miss here is that all these other manufacturers have done these special editions. Like he has an easy way out. Like he can do just do the special edition. Just follow the template that the other manufacturers have done, mm -hmm. just so they can satisfy the minimum to call it a record. Yeah. But I think he's gonna let his hubris kind of get over it. Yeah. And he's just gonna do like some crazy wild it's things. It's a weird spend argument a bunch that's of happening money. that yeah. doesn't need to happen. Yeah, 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 and yeah, all yeah, it yeah. will do is yeah. make yeah. them look worse. Yeah, like, yeah. like I think could, Tesla yeah. builds really cool, interesting, fast, exciting cars. Porsche, same thing. Yeah, yep. and it's just like this weird fight yeah. broke out, and yeah. everyone's like, "Why are you guys?" And, and, yeah. Hey, by the way, excuse me, folks. Do you remember when they cared about autonomy like yeah, a week yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Porsche comes out like, "Our electric car is for driving yeah, with your hands yeah. really fast." And Tesla's like, "To the Nurburgring, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna drive with our hands now. Like, yeah, we're not self-driving uh, motivation, you know, anymore." But that's because, because you're, don't because be a one-upper because the hype machine yeah, yeah. needs to move yeah. forward. Yeah. It's because the hype machine's and gotta it, go. But what is interesting is I wonder if this hype conversation will reach outside the bubble that we exist in like will people that have money yeah. and are going to go buy yeah. a luxury so, electric vehicle do they give will they even hear yeah. about which one won a record that they made up that so, week I, I think i think that some people will hear about it because there's some people that are ben tracers that just like to com you know True. compare numbers mm -hmm. but for the vast majority of people is they want the shiny new thing. Yeah. And the shiny new thing is the Porsche. Mm -hmm. Like the the Model S was the shiny new thing for five or six years. Yeah. But now there's a Porsche and they can look cool in the Porsche but be green. Yeah. Oh, do you think, sell you think, yeah. the question yeah. is cuz cuz the brand loyalty bought the lease yeah. the got you know the early adopter was the first Model S. Yeah. The brand yeah. loyalty leased the second Model yeah. S, but will those people put up with the quality yeah. and quality issues or yeah. will they go you mean I can have this sort of future thing yeah. in a, from a company that like has been building cars for yeah. 60 years yeah. like yeah. Ooh. yeah. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. there's I think that the Porsche Taycan uh, like base, like I think forty or fifty percent of the buyers are like standard Porsche buyers. Mm -hmm. So like they own nine elevens, they own this or that, and you know they may have currently owned an SUV or they may own like a hybrid BMW or something, and like or may own a Tesla, but they're like Porsche loyalists. So I think like at least thirty or forty percent of that is Porsche people that just want 
of another Porsche, and now they have a family car. Yeah. And I think a certain Porsche, maybe 20 or 30 percent, will move from a Model S or Model X because it's the new cool thing. So yeah. like people, especially yeah. here on the West Coast, is they want the cool new thing, but they don't want to look like they're terrible people. Yeah, yeah. So like they'll, you know, like like a lot of people drove Priuses in the mid 2000s because yeah. there was no other option to look like you were friendly to the environment. And no, then the Tesla that, you came. You know that Leno bit? That's a great, uh, it's a classic Leno bit. Leno, Leno has yeah. a bit about the Prius. He's uh, like, the Prius is ugly yeah. so that you can go to Rodeo Drive and yeah. say, do you see? Yeah. Do you see what I'm yeah. doing yeah. for you? Yeah, I'm giving things <laughs> up. Yeah, But that was the thing with the Tesla is like they could go into a car that was quick, like in a straight yeah. line, that was comfortable, you know, had decent seats it and stuff like that. It was a Bentley Prius. It was yeah, about, that's, that's all that was it was. Now that you was can it. floss and be, yeah, quote, yeah, yeah, outwardly yeah. green. Now you can yeah. have, yeah, like- On it's your like, way to your private jet. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah, basically, it's like driving a, a, you know, a Panamera Turbo or whatever, but you can feel like you're saving the earth because it's electric. And like, there's a lot of people that drive. Well, imagine you know, you're in the you're in the Porsche like dealership for the take-in and you're like, oh, so what do you have? You have, okay, these options are nice. I like these colors, that's pretty good. And you get yeah. blue, you know, Bluetooth screens, like, yeah, yeah we have that, sir, that's yeah. standard. You're like, wow, the Tesla had that. You're like, how many SEC investigations do you have? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. none, none yeah. this year. Yeah. Like, ooh, I do like yeah. that as well. Yeah. 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 And I'm sure that the, the, the take-in, tie-can, You'll be able to do, you know, paint the sample and all this other stuff. Where like yeah. Tesla now is like, we'll give you seven colors at launch, and then maybe we'll do four later, and maybe we got three now. Like, I think you know. I read in um, Niedermeyer's book yeah. that there was something about the Model Three, like, like the cost of adding red, yeah, was fucking astronomical. Weird to to, to be able to offer red. Huh. Like I I was just, I don't know there was I, yeah. I'm, I'm blanking on the exact specifics of it yeah. but it was something ridiculous. I, I know they they set up a special area and I I had never really looked into it deeply but I know they set up a special area like a special tent mm. for the red color. So like yeah, was, like people had like there's these like these guys that are like out there in planes and helicopters taking pictures of the Tesla factory and it looked like a murder scene. Like there was this <laughs> one tent everywhere. that was just red everywhere. <laughs> and that was a special area they set up to paint the Model 3's red. Dexter so, leased yeah, some yeah, of yeah, our yeah, space. Exactly. Oh yeah. my God, did you see that Fenske's video of the paint quality on his Model 3? Oh, yeah. Oh, brutal. so so <laughs> last month, yeah, so that, that, this kind of worked out really well. So last month I was at Pebble and uh, uh, I ended up on the same program uh, as Jason. Uh -huh. It was me and Jason and uh, Kyle Kennard from Road and Track. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Kyle was so, on the show. He's great. Uh, Kyle's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it worked out really well. But like, yeah, like I, I, I had never met Jason in person. Like I know him from online and stuff like that. And we had yeah. just talked like through email and stuff or you know, like Twitter. You, you probably became best friends in two yeah, seconds. Yeah. Right? So like we're just like the whole trip. We're just nerding out. Like you know we're there with uh, with Nissan and uh, so it was it was it was a good experience to, to, to spend some time with uh, with Jason. Yeah. But, yeah. You guys are like long lost brothers. Yeah. I'm yeah sure. But yeah, we we had a very good time. It was very very enjoyable. But yeah. Cool. Yeah, Jason Jason's cool. Um, let's get some audience shit before we get out of here. I'm I'm like super hungry. Yeah, oh my god, we I'm got a lot to get hungry too. Yeah. All right, yeah, because we're gonna go get food after this. It's late for us. It's probably later for them. Punch in. I can't no, see shit. It's almost shit. midnight. Midnight at my house. Yeah, I can't see it. <clears throat> All right, let's see. A couple people who just love Bozy. Thank you. Nick, thank thank you guys. Nick I says appreciate. You're it. a legend. Uh, Anthony says something to be said for buying a car with the preconceived notion that it's a piece of shit and being pleasantly surprised i went from an r53 cooper s I, oh i went to an r53 cooper s from a corolla oh presumably people told him his mini was going to be a piece of shit uh, and he was surprised yeah. well, don't worry just keep driving it'll get there <laughs> yeah. that's been my experience yeah too trying to repair him and people just refusing and a friend uh, of mine has one of these with 160,000 miles on it hasn't it broken. It works. It Incredible. is a miracle. Yeah, Incredible. Should, should. It is an anomaly. Knock, knock on wood. Yeah. 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 Thaddeus Don't jinx them, yeah. fell the fuck apart about 85,000 yeah. miles. Yeah. And mine, my, I, had a, I bought mine, mine new. I had an yeah. 06 JCW and I bought it uh, in a new in 06, end of 06, brand new. It was like the last yeah. one on the lot. Yeah. I drove it. The warranty was 50,000 miles. I drove, I sold it with 49,840 <laughs> miles <laughs> to, a guy, yeah. to a guy that I thought was just a regular guy, but yeah. I later realized was actually an exporter who most ah. certainly sent it to the Middle East yeah. somewhere. Hi. It yeah. works. So sidebar there, just minis. So uh, the team I work with in IMSA, they run Honda Civic TCR cars, but they also run minis in World Challenge. And they used to run minis in IMSA when they were allowed there. So mini fans 
are some of the most dedicated fans I've ever met. So like this team now they in IMSA, are seriously yeah, dedicated. He's yeah, right. like this team in IMSA now is not running any minis at all. So all the cars are running are Honda, you know, Civic type cars. But all the mini fans they had from like the past decade that you know used to support the minis now support the Hondas just because, just because they people. love the team so wow. much because they still run the minis in World Challenge. And like these people come to the races and like they'll come like you know like you know like full me, gear, yeah, 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 like you know, and like they'll support the team just because the team at some point either in their past or in another series supports mini. They're supporting too. Bro, like these it's are really, people that spend fifty G's on yeah. a one point eight liter yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, with it's a straight yeah. face. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I've met I've met a few of them that have like those GPS and all yeah. these other cars, and they'll come and like they'll you know they're just like so enthusiastic. Like yeah. it's just like I don't know. Like it's it's no. It's, that it's many cool. many people yeah. are a thing. Yeah, like yeah. they're like they're very like it's it's like a cool yeah. crowd and like they're like all into it. It is. If stuff. you want to if you want to buy into yeah. a culture, yeah. get yourself a fucking mini. Oh, yeah. Their their marketing team. When I had my mini and. When it was new and still kind of like under the you know warranty yeah, program, yeah. the shit that would show up at my house yeah. was always really fun. I mean, it was like it wasn't anything of value, but it was like T-shirts and like yeah. just little boxes of like you know things that would like pop up and open and like yeah. were colorful and like yeah. really, 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 really good branding. Oh, yeah. Wow, very smart people who were doing their shit. I don't love their cars now, but at the time, the R53 <laughs> was the jam. Yeah, when it was yeah. new, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Tyler says, can we talk about how rad the Mitsubishi Pajero Evo is? Thoughts on importing one versus trying to build something similar on a 20K budget in the States? So it's it's an awesome car. I mean, it's, you know, Pajero is the same thing as the Montero here, but we never got the Evo version. So you can buy a Montero here, but you'll never be able to do anything on a reasonable budget to get close to the Pajero Evo. So like if... A Pajero it's like a Evo Dakar is what you, yeah, homologation yeah. special. Yeah, so, basically, if a Pajero Evo is what you want, you just, just should import one. one. Yeah, like it's it doesn't make sense. Like you can throw bunches and bunches of money at a Montero, and you still won't be able to set it up to be similar to a Pajero Evo. Like uh, I talked about these, uh, I don't know, last year or whenever, and I incorrectly. I'll correct myself very publicly. I incorrectly said that it was an Evo motor. It's not. It's a V6. No, no. It's it's the same V6 that we got in the Monteros here. It's just tuned. Yeah. So it's either so a three was, liter or a three and a half liter V6. Same as the Diamante? Yep. Same same motor. Yeah. Same as the go. Diamante. Same as the 3000 GT. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. When, I, when I see them for sale from the importers, like if you want one, like... I don't. I don't think my guy Sean Morris, top rank importers. I don't think he has one right now. But yeah. like, if you want one, yeah, you can, you find can him, request yeah. that yeah. he'll get he'll get you one. Um, and they're always the importers always they pass through. Like they're not expensive. Like your budget's twenty k. Yeah, you I can think find a Pajero one, yeah. Evo is like twelve. Yeah, they're you can not find expensive. one for twelve or thirteen. I think. Yeah. 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 It's it's a it's a total nerd special and they yeah, look really yeah. cool but uh, but in in actual money they're yeah. not expensive no, no not very expensive at in all in other Mitsubishi news the Delica is done really oh, yeah, I'm getting yeah. it tomorrow Crook texted me today and he said he is so apparently there's a guy there who got real into the project <laughs> and like detailed and refinished like all my plastics that's and he awesome said, he said it looks incredible yeah, Whoa. so uh, you, he, he you wouldn't got, even send me a picture. He said, oh, "I'm cool. doing like an overhaul and oh, reveal when you come down." That's tomorrow. awesome. Um, yeah, because you got is, is yours a diesel? Yeah, yeah it's an exceed uh, turbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they have the most awesome names. <laughs> so if you ever look at the catalogs, oh yeah, Delica like, Star Wagon yeah, 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 Exceed yeah, yeah, yeah. Turbo. Like, they D. have like the most awesome names. So it's like what, like a ninety two, ninety one, ninety one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. forty thousand kilometers. Yeah, I remember I saw the picture on Instagram and like I figured it was around that range. But they have like the, the most awesome names and like those are not not terribly expensive. And like they use a lot of Montero parts. Totally. Yeah. There's so like, a website called yeah. delicausa.com that nice, shows you nice. all the equivalent Montero yeah, yeah, part yeah. numbers. Yeah. yeah. There's. A, I helped a guy actually track down some uh, tie rod ends for a Delica. Yeah. And they're from the 3000 GT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah. So he was like, he's like, I can find the stuff. So he like messaged me on Twitter or Instagram yeah. or somewhere. I was like, let me see what I can find out. They definitely did not put yeah. that in the GT catalog. They yeah. were like, by the way, yeah. same tie rod ends yeah. as the but Delica. We, yeah. Uh, if you have a broken tie rod end, yeah. We replaced the I replaced the shocks with yeah. the new K yeah. KYBs and replaced the upper ball joints, yeah. and it was three hundred and forty. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> that was so, so I had great. last year. I had a couple years ago. I had I sold it last year. Uh, 1989 Montero. So it was a first gen Montero. And that was like the, the whole thing. I was like, I bought on Rock Auto brand new Brembo rotors, uh, new shocks, 
new brake lines, like all this other stuff was $83. Yes. Like something like ridiculous. <laughs> like it was just cheap, like yeah. ridiculously cheap. Uh, Riley says, how do I convince my girlfriend she doesn't want a $6,000 Mini Cooper for a daily reliable college student car? Well, it's not reliable. See that, our earlier conversation yes, from five yes, minutes ago. Yeah. $6,000 gets you yeah. a great Japanese car. Oh, yeah. From the mid 2000s, Sammy says, uh, "Matt, you've driven both a, uh, Alpha 4C and the Lotus Evora. Which would you buy and why? F Evora all day oh, yeah. and 75 times on Sunday. <laughs> Make sure it's a supercharged model. There was a lot of other things that were changed when they added the supercharger beyond just supercharger. If you can afford it, a 400 is the motherfucking jam, the jam, and they are lovely. Uh, the Evora." has all the good things about the 4C, except it doesn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have Italian reliability. And it's not Italian. Yeah. yeah. Thomas says, uh, what is the most fun on four wheels for $10,000? I mean, it, it that depends. Like, Where do you, you want to yeah, yeah, define yeah, as yeah, fun? Yeah, like, do you want to go, you know, just have a little curvy roads? Do you want to do track days? Do you want to go off-road? I mean, that's that's kind of a hard question, you know, to answer without knowing, knowing some specifics. The I did have someone contact me today and confirm with their own photo evidence that a Safari LS 400 is indeed nothing more than strut spacers and big wheels and tires. Oh yeah, that's, and that's so a lot of these a lot of these Safari builds now yeah. are like one inch or two inch spacers yeah. and big tires. Like it's not an actual build. What, what kind of damage will that do if you actually off road it, if any? So it depends on where it's placed and where the spacers are placed. So it's not going to really do any damage, but it's, you know, you, you, the the shock valving is set up for the factory ride. So it's yeah. not set up to be right. off-roaded. So like your 911. Yeah. You know, like. No, I have yeah. shocks that yeah. are for yeah. off-roading. Yeah. My, so my, like, my 911 yeah. rides like a Raptor. Yeah. So like somebody like Keen, you know, he's, he's a professional driver. So he has experience with, you know, like dampers and valving and, you know, like just set up adjustments for, you know, tow and camber and things like that. And the tires you're using, like all of that goes into an equation where like, I'm sure he either sits down or he has somebody like me that he's worked with in the past where like they look at the numbers and say, we're going to use this, this, and this. And then they send the stuff back to the damper manufacturer, or you have knobs where you can adjust compression and rebound and stuff like that. Mm. And these guys just put spacers on, is they just go out there and the car just bounces around. Eventually, it'll wear out the dampers or the shocks, whatever you know, whatever you have on there, and it's not going to perform in a manner that, that it should perform on off-road. Like you know, it'll bottom out and do these things. Even though it's raised off when it enters something, it'll still bottom out because yeah. the shocks aren't you know able to support that pressure. Yeah. Uh, to clarify, if this dude meant a sports car, 10k. You know, you're talking Civics, Miatas, would, that kind I of would, stuff. For 10K, if you want a sports car, I would get an NC Miata, get the revised version of the NC Miata with the six-speed, which is like 2010 and up. Mm -hmm. And you can get one of those now for like seven. Perfect. And you can put a fusion motor, like a 2.5 liter. It bolts right up because really? it's the same motor as a two liter. <laughs> it bolts right up. You can find one for $250. What? And you can pay somebody $1,500 to put one in. So and how much more power do you get? It goes from... A, Think. 160 yeah, or like 160 ish to like 190. Oh, really? Yeah, it's like for like a two thousand dollar investment, that's like paying somebody to put it in. Yeah, yeah. it's the same. Literally, all the outside stuff is the same. Just the displacement, just the displacement is different, and the intake manifold is different. But you can like slightly modify the intake manifold so it bolts in. Amazing. So there you go. NC Miata with the two and a half liter swap. There you go. You probably find one that's already swapped for like eight grand. Perfect. Anthony says uh, that I mentioned a place wants to post freelance articles in the past for potential exposure. What was it? I think I meant like Kinja, honestly. Yeah. It's but, but you can also like uh, roadandtrack.com is looking for content. Um, you can email uh, Bob Sorkanerich, uh, which I don't it's like all, I, I don't want to say his you email, fuck that out. You but fuck you that can up. get yeah. you can get him on Twitter. It's yeah. uh, you can get at him or Travis Sikulski. Like you, you find a website or a, the, a, an outlet that you like. Typically, their editor or their associate editor, deputy editor, is like easily accessible via social media. Oh, yeah. And like send a DM and be like, "Here, I wrote this. Yeah. Do you, you just, like it? Do you not yeah. like it? If you like, you just have to have examples. So like, yeah. if you don't have an example of your writing anywhere out there. Most people aren't going to give you the time of day. Like, right. you either set up a personal blog, blog, or use Kinja. Like, that's that's basically how I started. Is like, I had my own little personal blog, 
And I was on like message boards and forums. And I was like, let me try and post this on a blog and see if people read it. And people read it. I was like, all right. And then after a while, I just started pitching it, you know, to get paid for it. And take my advice. If you want to try writing today, start with something that is not just car reviews. Yeah, every, everybody does car reviews. And that's that's like the main benefit I have is I have a niche that's yeah. not car. I do occasional Your car niche reviews. rules. But it's like, it's it's a good niche because I can pitch to anybody and it's different. Yeah. Uh, Luke says, I've heard a lot of hype about the Camaro 1LE. Is it as good as everyone says? I think so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, a great 1LE car. 1LE is awesome. I mean, any level you get it at, even, even the small motor is like, it's a good car. Remember, uh, we were at NCM when we were racing. Yeah. I had uh, Matt Busby because yeah. I hadn't been an NCM in forever. Yeah, yeah, I had Matt Busby like lap their safety me car or whatever. in their safety yeah. car, which was the four-cylinder yeah, turbo yeah, one yeah, LE. Yeah. Yo, and he was mobbing. Yeah, yeah, they have they have the whole setup from the bigger cars, and you can make all the adjustments. So like, yeah. you won't have the power, but like a four-cylinder one LE is actually a really good car. Like if you want to get started on, like, driving on a track, yeah, because you get all the adjustments you can make on the suspension but you don't have a whole bunch of power like where you can end up in a wall yeah it was he was actually going pretty good yeah. so i mean the one le like handling package on all the motors is yeah, yeah it is very good uh let's see okay thoughts on is this the same luke okay thoughts on the viability of running an older formula reno for track days apparently you can get a vintage formula ford or newer formula reno two liter for similar cash if the choice was yours what would you have and ride do you have any open wheel experience with this uh, a little bit I, w I would probably do the formula ford i mean the formula reno is nice too just from like a crew chief mechanic perspective just because parts availability and uh just because there's more people that know how to work on them. But even the formula I know too, like that's not a huge difference. So if like that's what you prefer, it's fine. Like, but I would probably lean to the formula for the, uh, Larry Webster that yeah. runs like VP of content at Haggerty. He owns a Formula Ford. So like during the historic race, he actually raced in the he race. He raced those. Sam Smith yeah, has yeah, raced, yeah. Has, has or had yeah, a Formula used to Ford. Have one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but Larry owns a uh, Gurney built Formula Ford and they're you know, fun little cars and you can, you know, do all kinds of fun stuff with them. But I think, you know, I would probably go Formula Ford just because most vintage shops or crews that you can rent to support your racetrack will have more experience than the formula renault but good call the formula renault is not that much more expensive. i drove a formula one renault yeah, once like yeah, yeah. the engine's not that special no, like it's, it's a whatever it's, like i said it's fairly if, similar yeah. if you're in america yeah get the ford don't guy don't get a french yeah, engine yeah, if yeah. you don't you know what yeah, i mean if yeah. it's not if it's not crucial yeah. to your experience yeah. you know Just buy a citroen yeah. sm <laughs> for, your, for, for your cruising car yeah, yeah yeah uh brian says a while ago uh i responded to the question with one fast daily driver is better than a slow daily and a slow sports car <laughs> That's true. I agree. Yeah. I bought a Julia T a Ti Sport and love it. Oh, thank you. All right, cool, good. That's, a that's, Julia Ti Sport is fun. That's that's a really good car. I hope the best for you. <laughs> it's a fun. really fun car when it works. <laughs> I agree. Gravity Drift says, "Are R32 GTRs worth the price as something to experience, or is there a better experience for the money?" I really like r32 gtrs yeah. i've driven a bunch of different yeah. ones and they are really really fun they drive much more modern than their age would actually indicate they're equal parts analog and sort of techy yeah. the engines are really really lovely um and is there a better ex I, you know it, it doesn't they don't have as much curb appeal as you think they do yeah. most people just see it as an old nissan yeah, they don't really know or something yeah. Yeah. yeah and then when people do see it they they yeah. kind of like lose their shit yeah. especially Lee, Lee keen is building one currently yeah he bought his from sean same place i bought mine from and like i think if you if you think you might like one like if you liked it in video games and you like how it looks and driving on the right doesn't bother you it more than lives up to what you think it's gonna be you know what i mean yeah. and so like a collector yeah. grade one for 40k like yeah. maybe it's actually yeah i think it's a, probably a 35 or forty thousand dollar driving experience for a nice one yeah, yeah. they're uh, fun dude they uh, are fun yeah i mean right now if you get one for 35 and drive it for a year like don't put a whole bunch of miles on it Keep you're gonna get your, yeah you're gonna get 35 back yeah. out of it and possibly more yeah like they're starting to go up 
At least would, until, you know, the rest start <clears throat> being able to be. I legal. very strongly recommend yeah. keeping powertrain yeah. stock. Oh, like, yeah. if you must modify, yeah. limit it to coilovers and tasteful yeah. wheels from a really good brand yeah. like BBS yeah. or Work or yeah. TE37s. Keep it like. Or a 1552. If you're gonna, or 1552. <laughs> if, if you're going to modify those yeah. and then, like, the, it needs to be with the right yeah. parts. Otherwise, yeah. if people are like, ooh, yeah. it's like poison. Yeah, no well, way. because if you look at a car that's a, a tuner car, yeah. whereas, you know, popular with that crowd mm -hmm. and you see sh cheap parts on it you're gonna yeah. go what else yeah. what else you know. uh let's see dante zero says uh speaking of cool electrics thoughts on california's lightning motorcycles and there i've never seen lightning motorcycles yeah. let's go to the next question zach will you look that up yep ren says uh my 97 miata engine blue and i need to swap it budget three and a half k and i do not have skill what fits in a 97 miata bozy an LS fits, but if you <laughs> three don't and have, half K? It, for three and a half K, the cheapest LS swap I've done in a Miata, so like not counting labor, is right. about forty two hundred dollars. Okay. So like that's completely out of it. All right, like you could get an old Boss Frog kit to get a three hundred two out of a Ford. Okay, so like get you know like out of a Fox body, get a three hundred two. And what about get, just better four cylinders? Can you get put a newer Miata engine in there for thirty five hundred bucks or not really? You can, but it's not going to be fusion a, thing. Not gonna be a huge bump. That doesn't fit. The direct injection pump on the back of the head interferes with the firewall on the older Miatas. Like you can do, there's some guys doing a, a Ecotech, GM Ecotech swaps that are about 200 horsepower. But even that, like without skill, if you're, you're gonna have to pay somebody yeah. three or four grand at least, plus the three or four grand for the kit on the motor. There's so a like, there's a Honda K24 yeah. swap from those guys, yeah. but I don't know same if you can do it for 3,500 yeah, bucks. Same deal. Like just the kits usually are three to four grand because they require some fabrication. Yeah, and plus. If you don't have the skill and you're paying somebody, that's another three or four grand in labor. Yeah. So, like stock motor, you could go to a slightly newer 1.8 liter, maybe get 10 or 15 horsepower. But you know, unfortunately, if you don't have the skill in that range, you're not going to get a whole lot. If you don't got the skill, you got the cash. Pretty much. One or the yeah. other, dude. That's Pay it. an expert. That's uh, it. What's up with this Lightning motorcycle, Zach? Uh, it's got cool. a hundred mile range, uh -huh. uh, 168 foot pounds of torque, 200 horsepower. Oh. Revs to 10.5 and it will go 218 <laughs> if you have high speed gearing and a fairing on it. Wow. That sounds that uh, a little dangerous. Sounds nuts. good. Gnarls. Pull the picture up. Yeah. It's uh, very sport bikey. It looks like a, you know, yeah. sort of like a 600 yeah. or a 1000 sport yeah. bike, like a Jixxer or yeah. Ninja. Yep. Good looking bike. I mean, those, Is those this from, made in LA? It weighs 500 pounds. Uh, I think it's at San Jose. Oh. Uh, do, 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 never do. seen it before. Yeah. It's yeah, cool. never seen it before. I don't know. Hey, if you work at Lightning, hit me up. I mean, it looks rad. Yeah. Like I see I people mean, yeah. on, in LA. Like I yeah. see electric sport, electric yeah. bikes. I see the zeros and those like yeah. all the time. Yeah. They're cool. Yeah. yeah, they're interesting. Yeah, good city bikes. Yeah. I don't. I don't have any thoughts. I'm sorry. Right. Oh, anything else? Oh, Blake wants to know. Oh, because I put a tweet. I put an Instagram post up. Can you go to my Instagram? There's uh, with the steering wheels. Uh, I drove the Ferrari 812. And then I drove the GT3 RS, nice. and I thought the approach to steering wheels was interesting. The yeah. Ferrari well, has the buttons and no everything buttons. Yeah, yeah. on the wheel, yeah. and then click over to the right, Zach, because yeah. Porsche has nothing yeah. on the wheel. Yeah. So completely different approaches here, and the question is, which do I prefer? So I called the uh, the Ferrari uh, race car theater or something yeah. like that or motorsport I like that. theater. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that. That was cool. Yeah, because they're like, pretending to be race car, -y, but it's not yeah. really race car stuff. Yeah, it the just shit looks that's like on the it, yeah. on the steering wheel. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, race cars have buttons yeah. all on the steering wheel yeah. too, but they don't do this. No, nah. they don't do any of the stuff yeah. that these do. No, nah, like they have you have pit limiters, radio buttons, yeah. like changing fuel maps and stuff like that. Yeah, and this is just like cruise control. It, it's like yeah. blinkers and yeah, headlights yeah, 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 and yeah, stuff yeah. like that, and so. And then on the Porsche, they they go look. You know, I think their philosophy is if you're on the track, you're not changing shit. Yeah, yeah. And we and nothing wrong with a blinker stock. The the blinker stocks and the wiper stocks are it's, basically the same fine, as my yeah. eighty seven. <laughs> yeah. um, it works. It's good. It's fine. And so so here's where I really think I think each of their wheels really do match the character of yeah. those cars. And with the Ferrari, I think it works because with the Ferrari, you really never have to remove your hands from nine and three yeah. this car has the fastest front engine steering yeah. rack i've ever yeah. used um combined with a very shit turning radius <laughs> it's there's not a lot there's very little that's, angle so that, 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 very much. Uh, that could be because of the way the suspension is set up yeah so the rack could be very good but 
like we talked about the alpha in the past, mm -hmm. like if uh, Ackerman style set up for the suspension, where it'll like do a little, be a little hoppy and have a big turning radius. Yeah. Like when you're at slow speed and turning, it'll be bad. But when you're going fast, I want to turn, it'll respond very quickly. Yeah. So like it's trade offs. Uh, I think each of the steering wheels did match the character of the cars. Uh, although if you just ask which I really prefer, I think I go no buttons. I think no buttons over yeah. all the buttons. Yeah, I think that's that. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, I think we had one more, and then we go. Last question, and then we're gonna go get some fucking late ass dinner. Yeah. Jordan says, "Is a Hellcat Red Eye wide body?" Worth a two hundred and fifty dollar a day rental experience. Thinking of renting one for my thirtieth on Sunday. Seven hundred horsepower wide body Hellcat for two hundred and fifty dollars for twenty four hours. I would say yeah. a big fat yes. Yeah. Yes, I would uh, definitely. I, say I would yes. agree. I mean, yeah. if you're paying thirty dollars a day for you know a Hyundai Accent, yeah. <laughs> two hundred and fifty for that experience for seven hundred horsepower. Yeah, yeah. It's no, very a, very reasonable. A Hellcat yeah. is a lot of laughs. Yeah. If you've never experienced a Hellcat motor, it's a fucking great great yeah. laugh machine yeah. so you should definitely spend 250 dollars on a hellcat for torque again. and burning rubber yeah do you want to promote anything bose uh just usual stuff so you can follow Writing. me uh, yeah follow me hunable.com is like my portfolio at hunable on twitter so that kind of matches up you can follow me there bosey's the best follow on twitter if you yeah. love cars because so, like, he digs through like import documents and engine diagrams yeah. and yeah. fucking nerdy shit yeah. that you're glad someone else can summarize yeah. for you. Yeah, you, get, you get cool info you know like stuff so like a lot of that stuff I use like with a lot of the stuff I work so I, like I work in trucking too and all kinds of things and I use just with a lot of my jobs and gigs and stuff, I'll use a lot of that stuff, and then I'll share some of the information I find. But I find it's really helpful, like when the when the uh, Focus RS like head gasket yeah. gate was oh, going was on. One, yeah. yeah, we talked because you know, he had a car, course, so I went back did. and forth with him. But I think, uh, it's, yeah. I think it's really easy. I had for, a Lincoln MKT head yeah, gasket yeah, yeah. or MKC so like, <laughs> head gasket. Well, that was helpful because I got numbers from him, and then I have a guy inside Ford that's like, "Give me the numbers." Yeah, so I went back and forth. And I was able to go, but it's helpful go down because through if, it. If all you do as a, as a fan of cars is you scroll through like Twitter quickly in the morning, you read Road and Track, you read Jalopnik, like you see the story that grabs your interest that might just be. Oh, the head gaskets are bad. They're blowing up, yeah, and you go, "Oh, that's what yeah. it is." And then you continue to spread that information yeah, yeah, in every yeah. parking lot for the rest of yeah, your life. That's a lot of that stuff, yeah. and that's the thing is, there are a lot of people that are just kind of ag aggregating other people's information. So if one person says something once, and all these other blogs or websites aggregate it, and it becomes truth, and a lot of times it's not true, and so it's like you know, I try kind of you know to get reasonable information out there with with stuff that backs up what I'm trying to say. Nice. Yeah, yeah. it's very good. It's very good. But follow Thanks me. for uh, for post-flight showing it. I think yeah. that was a good no, idea. It was, it was, it was glad good. You it worked it. out. I'm glad you guys invited me. I'm you know, happy to be on here, and now we can go get some food. Yeah. What's the press car at your hotel? NSX. Oh, really? Yeah, we're doing, oh, great. A, we're doing a whole deal with the NSX, which is like, like, is like somebody built a press trip for me. Who's we? Haggerty? No, no, like Acura just invited me straight really? up. Yeah. Just because you're you? Yeah. Because you're Bozy? Yeah. Oh, that's so, awesome. So, like, the press trip. So, like, I work in IMSA and World Challenge, like, you know, just for, like, my racing stuff. So, like, I'm a crew chief in World Challenge and I'm a race mechanic in IMSA. So, like, I work on all this stuff. And, like, this weekend, I didn't have an IMSA gig. Uh -huh. Like, a few weeks ago, guys from Acura are like, hey, you want to do this trip with us? Fly into LA. We'll give you an NSX. We'll go, like, Canyons, you know, awesome. PCH, all this stuff up to Monterey. And then you hang out with all the like accurate like mechanics and like people and race you know race drivers. Oh, that sounds great. And camp at the track. I was oh, like, perfect at Laguna. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, this is like if somebody had asked me it's to like dream. build a trip. Yeah, it's like, perfect. This is this is like almost exactly what I would say. You've driven so, NSX yet? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I've fun. driven. So I haven't driven this revised one. So this revised one has oh, it's like good. A, yeah has like the new anti roll bars and stuff. Like the last yeah. one I drove was like two years ago or something like you that. You probably won't notice the difference. Yeah, so you like, have to drive yeah, them back to back. Yeah. So like you know I know I know the changes they made and like why they made them and like you know I'm not a skilled enough driver to know the difference. But I understand why they made them, and you know what what that does it's to nice. the car. But it's yeah, the whole setup is like worked out really well. Your is anyone going in the car with you? I think I'm gonna pick up an engineer at some point as I'm going up north. Your suitcase won't fit in the trunk. Oh yeah. Uh -uh. Well, that's gonna be interesting. Remember, I had the NSX, yeah. and I had to pick my dad yeah. up at the airport, yeah. and I learned his suitcase wouldn't fit yeah. in the trunk, and he had to go. 
Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody, somebody might be holding that suitcase in their lap because it has to go with me and the NSX up to Monterey. Well, dude, are you coming oh back down this way or are you no. flying home from there? Flying out of San Jose. I'd give you a, yeah. give you a soft suitcase yeah, or something. No. I'm flying yeah. out of San Jose. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you got like, a tape measure. Yeah. It's going to be interesting because I think, I think somewhere like – like I'm staying down near you yeah. and then I'm leaving from there and like I have to go 75 miles north like towards the canyons or uh -huh. somewhere back there and then I'm meeting like a like the, you know like bringing a van of Acura people uh -huh. and I think somebody's gonna hop in with me to do the rest of the trip up to Monterey <laughs> to your, your suitcase yeah. is gonna be belted in the past <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be an MDX behind yeah. you or something I'm sure I, be, right? I, I, I'm, I'm oh, betting yeah. that yeah something yeah, like yeah, that yeah, will be there truck. Yeah, 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 truck I'm guessing so but For we'll sure. see but like I'm, I'm, I'm hyped about it because it's like literally like like Rad. I'm not you know like Fancy hotels and dinners and stuff like I get bored. And like, tourist season is kind of over, so yeah. Highway One yeah. up there won't it's be, be should be, be super crowded. So it's yeah, gonna be awesome. Good. So like updated NSX, race car stuff sounds perfect. Like awesome. How so nice? I'm hyped about it. All right, let's get some food, homie. Let's what do you go say? eat. All let's right, guys, eat. thanks for listening. Bozy Tatravic. Now, Thank now you. you know why I love this fucking guy because he's the most <laughs> fucking interesting ref. He's like. Let's get some more fucking refugees like this in this bitch, please. Yeah. If they're all, if they're more like him, we need more of that. And your <laughs> and your fucking brother who yeah. has an open seat in that chair. All right. Uh, I all know right. you're out there, boy. On I didn't forget you. Yeah. You, get, you get a seat in that chair too. All right. There you go. Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, connection to the internet, and something to say. Tomorrow we're back live at noon Pacific. Uh, with Amy Shackelford and Johnny Valencia, who are uh, car event planners. And I know a lot of people ask me about that kind of thing as a job. So you can be able to talk to them about career day in car event planning. See you guys later. Good night. Thanks.